Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of the Zool 24 podcast. Uh, and as always, our podcast is sponsored by Antec Airsoft Studios. He's good with guns, bad with table saws. Whether you're trying to just make your gun look nice and pretty or make it shoot to the moon and back, head on over to Antec Airsoft Studios. If you want to reach out to him online, antecairsoftstudios.com. And also the Snack Bar. They serve hot food, cold food, red food, blue food, me food, and you food. And also Zulu Outdoor. It's an outdoor store, but it's indoors. So it's an indoor outdoor store located right here on Zulu 24. If you want to reach out to them, you can give them a call at 845-684-3139. Whether you just need that last minute item or you need to pick up an entire kit, they've got what you need. Head on over to ZuluOutdoor.com. And also Blue Mag Airsoft. You won't be blue when you shoot their BBs. They've got high quality BBs and they're trying to get them manufactured right here in the United States. Uh, for more information on that, head on over to bluemagairsoft.com. Also, don't forget, you can listen or watch this podcast on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Apple, Amazon, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify with video, and Google. Remember, always like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Go ahead and push those videos out there. Give it to your grandma for the next birthday. I'm sure she'll love it. Kind of an impulse. I still have this old one from when I used to stream all the time, but it drives me nuts all the time. So this is the, the car that they can say, just, hey, here's your budget. We want to do this, but we want Yeah. We got it, but it was a whole kit that came with the mic here. Mm. Good, ready. Everybody's headphone volume. Yeah, look at this. I, am. <clears throat> I, have to I don't sound like a little kid. Off. That's good. <laughs> Take that bass and go. <laughs> hey guys, what's hey up? guys. Ted, uh, Ted Colgrove. <clears throat> Ted Colgrove. 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 What did What did Mike call me? On the on, on a, that, he got my last name wrong on the podcast that you guys were on. He's like Ted oh. Park or something. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, I was listening to it, and I was like, that's not my name. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but that's yeah, not me. He said that, I was like, who the fuck is I was like, mm, I didn't catch it. Maybe that was a different Asian. He's good at this. Yeah. He's like a very good host, and mm -hmm. I'm nowhere yeah. near that. So he's very, here. he's very fluid and uh, comfortable. Oh, yeah, hundred thousand percent. Like he's so just, long. it's natural for him. He's just freaking natural. This is weird having Jordan sit over here. Yeah, I know it's really weird. All right, are you able to hear? <clears throat> Which camera am I looking into if I am Doesn't looking? Matter. So your close-up shot's that one. Co and that's the, the Canon? Shot. Yeah, the Canon. Okay. And then that's Dave's, that's Mickey's. Or I'll just talk to you guys like this. Yeah, it's just okay. a conversation, man. That's all, right. all it is. is this I'm your nervous. First, is this your first podcast? No. Other, he, than he the, other than the one from Mike. Mike's is way more professional than this one. I think I was more just like, I was like, I've met Mike and I've done like a lot of video and food for him. Yeah. So it was more just. Right on. Well, now you're in the big leagues, baby. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, this is available on Spotify. Are we, are we recording right now? We are. Perfect. Oh, I'm just okay. trying to get my mic volume going. I don't know if it's okay. I can. Your voice is fine. Okay. <clears throat> so whatever you're hearing yeah, is so up I to Yeah, so I got to turn my headphones on. Yeah, it's fine. How long have you had that? That's like, they don't make those anymore, do they? No, uh, I actually bought that within the past year from this guy, Kevin, who bought it from Hoffman? Yeah. And then Hoffman got it from unknown sources. So, wow. and probably from Ronan from GMR. Well, he converted it. It was the it was the uh, the original stock. And yeah. So he converted it to. GMR the, did a giveaway for an MP5. What? A uh, TW5, and Ethan won it. Is that how Hoffman got this? No. No. Oh. No, no. Ethan sold his and bought his uh, PBS14. Oh, right on. What stock is that? That's the J stock for an MP5. So technically, MP5 I just bought it. I just bought it. I oh, know. Is, like, is it a real one? It. I don't know I what it, it is. Then. I just bought it. They went on sale for five hundred and forty-five dollars. Oh shit! Really? Just the stock. Just the stock. Yeah, like yeah. HK's insane. Give us the MP7, and we'll forgive all your sins. <laughs> Give us HK girl back. <laughs> I don't even care about that. Give me MP7, <laughs> civilian, no, I, I semi-auto, <laughs> whatever. I, need I don't care. Life. It'll never be legal in New York, but it'll come to PA sometime. Take you out. 
So, but then I can't own it. I get to play with all these. Oh, cool that's true. Then you're like, man, I gotta go. Idea. Gotta go back. Now. Gotta go back, guys. <laughs> so here's we, your here's your cool stuff back. <laughs> but wait, I have an idea. We start that op company. Make it based out of PA. Now we have a business in PA. The business address. We still can't bring it in New York. Change your resident address to PA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just have like a big gun locker. I live in the office. <laughs> there it is. There's a Connex box. It's just a Connex. Yeah, it's not like John Wick. Wick. It's, you not walk even, in, it's, it's like, not even a building. It's just a freaking Connex box. Yeah. ATF oh, goes there just like. Oh, What's that? We could put it on Chris's property. That's all by like Lake Wallen Palpuck. Pal- He's got a garage out there. Wallen Palpuck. It's not no, a no. movie. Huh? Lake Juan Paul Peck. It's not a movie. It might uh, be. It's, in the, it's in the office. Oh. They go there for like. Oh, is office. that Lake by Scranton? I don't even know where that is. Yeah, it is. It oh, is kind of okay. out there. Yeah. Yes. Question. Uh, I don't know. Red Storm, right? The Lace Factory. Oh, my God. That is cool. that the clock tower in the intro to the office? Bam, bam, bam. I don't know. Maybe. I think it is. We can look it up. I think it is. Wow. Right? That's really weird. Right? That doesn't exist anymore, then. Nope. Technically, no. <clears throat> well, they don't make any new episodes, yeah. Oh, we should start this, huh? I also think we keep this whole segment. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this is, I, I'm a this is uh, before the cameras turn on. Yeah, yeah. If the cameras are on. Yeah, it's all right. So, Ted, who do you hate in the industry? Like, absolutely hate. Hey. I don't want names and producers. Oh, wow. That you can talk about on air. No, no, no. It's, it's just us. It's just no, us. It's just um, us. So don't worry about it. It's just us. Don't answer this question, Ted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Don't answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, hate I, anyone. Uh, I like how you were thinking about it. Though. I don't like, really hate anyone. I just find some people like annoying and like if they're, if they have such following, they should use their following for better things. I already know who you're talking about. I <laughs> that, there's a consensus there for a lot of things. Yes. Okay. The intro always gets me because I have to like stumble over myself here real quick. <clears throat> I got to put on my voice. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals? Welcome back to another edition of the Zoo 24 podcast. I know that's not the real name. We still haven't come up with a name and I'm still going to say it every time. Today on tonight's podcast and this recording right now, what we're doing, let's get ready to rumble. If you've ever been to an Airsoft game, since 2005, you've seen a wild man running around with a orange helmet and a splatter camo vest <laughs> with a camera with a lens that's four feet long, taking pictures half a mile away. And that, my good friends, is Ted Calgrove. Ted. Hi. Welcome. I'm Ted. <laughs> Hi, Ted. Or if you were back in the day when we all used call signs because we used to be forum based, it'd be primer. Primer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Were you playing with Phil Force back then? Yeah, buddy. A long time. Way in the way in the past, man. Way wow, past. Phil Force. So we got some new new uh, co-hosts today, uh, hailing all the way from behind the mic. Now stepping in front of the screen, we've got Jordan Esposito. And there's only man on this earth. There's only one man on this earth that I'll follow in his name is Jordan Esposito. Oh, God. And Jordan Esposito <laughs> alone. Oh God. Welcome to the front side of the camera, there, fella. I know it's weird being on this side. Yeah. And to my right, your left, we've got the one, the only. The Smiggy, the Smiggy, the Smiggy Balls here with us today. <laughs> Hello. And he's doing well. Off to a good start, Smiggy. <laughs> I am here for the podcast. There you go. He's well, doing well. You're in Anthony's chair, so you, you have medium expectations. To fill. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Well, you just have to say random things at random times. And ah, good. To, okay. Yeah, ADHD fit, the energy go. needs to be high. Yeah. yeah. I'll fit these shoes perfectly then. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. How was your travels out here, Ted? Uh, not bad. It was a little traffic-y, but I guess people want to get home for... Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. What is your exact address, and what's the best time when you're not home? Um, I'm always that. home. I work from home. Oh. I've been working from home since 2020. No robbing this guy. Nope. <laughs> I got lots of locks. All right, so let's get lots of locks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in different calibers. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get in it. Uh, like I said before, Ted's been taking pictures forever, right? Uh, Ted, how, I ask everybody this, how'd you get into Airsoft? Ooh. Um, so I accidentally shot myself in the head, but with a ricochet from one of those Daisy pellet guns. You were, you were the kid. I was the kid. You shoot your eye out. Uh, Yeah. I shot myself. Yeah. In the basement, ricocheted, hit me in the head. And I was like, "Mm, I probably shouldn't do this. (laughs) So I went to Walmart and bought one of those pump shotguns, like pump, uh, airsoft shotguns. Oh, right on. Yeah. And I started like shooting like little cups in my basement and i was like there's got to be something better than this so i yeah 
Google Airsoft Forum. So for those of you who are old enough to know what Airsoft Forum is, um, and I found these guys that used to play in Whitehall, the Whitehall Ruins. Oh, nice. And uh, that was like 2007. So uh, so then I went out and I with my pump Airsoft shotgun with my like Abercrombie pants oh, that I thought yeah. looked military enough. Yeah. Con- like completely sheared them like in half, just like stepping up on a rock. It was great. That was my first. Was so, you, first. so you came out with a with a a Springer. Oh yeah, with the like point one twos, you know the little red like the red clear ones. Oh man, you thought you were. Oh you man, thought you were it was like this. Yeah, you wouldn't hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did everybody else have? They, they, oh like, man, full Tokyo Maroons. Like, like, yeah, some people had Tokyo Maroons back in the day. Like uh, let's see, like there were some Augs there, some old like Mac like Mac Elevens. Oh god. Um. So you were doing well, is what you're saying. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I went to I don't you guys are probably don't know what Q Mart is or Quaker Town uh, Farmers Market is. Nope. But there used to be like this crazy little shop that had sold, you know, like Mall Ninja stuff. Okay. But they had like MP5s in the wall. Oh hell yeah. So I bought one of those. You could shoot yourself in the foot. You wouldn't even feel it. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I, I I did like what most people do when they first start is like they buy all the random stupid stuff because they think it looks cool. Yeah. And it's just awful and breaks. Yeah, so. I think when when I bought my first gun, it was like uh, cheapest, highest velocity, it was like a D Boys M4, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it was like 150 bucks off yeah. Airsoft Mega Store or something like that. And I was like, yes, this is the way. Mm-hmm. And then it broke. Yeah, so yeah, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you got an airsoft. Yeah, yeah. And, and then how how did you progress from there? Right, it just you, kind of bubbled. Uh, like we we played every almost every two or three days. We went. Oh, I would go to I would go to Whitehall, and then I started like buying like better guns. Um, I got like echo ones, like back when Ooh, fancy. Oh yeah. And then, um, I think my best gun at the time was like a G and G. They had like metal bodies back then. Oh, the yeah. special ones. Like, yeah. yeah. Cause everything was plastic. Oh yeah. So the metal bodies were like, Oh, or a classic army was like big back then. Um, and then I just got into it and fine. Like I, thank God I got in there soft after college because <laughs> If I didn't, if I got in the airsoft before college, I wouldn't have graduated. <laughs> <laughs> After college, I had an income, yeah. like I was living by myself, so I could just do whatever. And um, I just kind of like snowballed. Like, right on. So, yeah. what was the first big event you went to? I went to this John Liu event up in Ransomville, New York, and I key cast. Oh, good for you. It was awesome. Starting off. Yeah. yeah. Max Mullen was there and he told me to pick up a bunch of these guns. So I, I had like 15 guns in my hands and I was running. He's like, fast. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I was like, what? Uh, this was like 2009, I think, 2008. Yeah. And I was like double timing it. And I was like, oh God. And then I was like, oh God. <laughs> and then I they, they they had to bring a Humvee over. I had to get like an IV. You were the guy. I was the guy. So I'm like, whenever anyone asks, is anyone he cast? I'm like, Damn it! Me did my first Milson West too. I did that like the night. Well, once you get once you heat cast once, you're more susceptible <laughs> to it. Like later. Yeah, on. yeah. So now I know of like what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Jeez. Which Milson West was that? Where did you heat cast at? <clears throat> uh, Rostov. What is that one? Uh, down in was that the North Carolina? One? North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the first. right on Rostov. It was the first Rostov. Yeah, it was the first. It was my Milson first. Twenty fifteen. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, right on. <laughs> that was awful. My whole body's like, I couldn't move. <laughs> Good for you. When I talked to you, that game sucked. Just it was the weather. Well, we didn't know where we were. Yeah. For like, we were like dropped in the middle of nowhere, and no one knew. We were we went a mile in the wrong direction. Perfect. So we were like, okay, we got to turn around. We're that's, like, that's no so one's Milson. reading any of their compasses or their maps. We're <laughs> like, what do we train for? Oh, no one trained in the cool. That's cool. Neat. <laughs> Where's the sun at? Okay, we're <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sun to our backs. One of the guys who jumped off the helicopter. Like sprained his ankle immediately. Perfect. Ooh. So I was like, Oof. neat. Yeah. Liability instantly. <laughs> this is going to be a great week. Yeah. I was, like, off great. I was like, this is going to, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I was really upset. Like, I, I cried. I, no, I, I cried because I thought, like, because the, uh, the whole premise is like, you're not allowed off the field. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, I came, we drove like 15 hours. Yeah. And this is like, it was like 10 30 at night. And I was like, I don't, I'm not allowed to play for the rest of the game. Ugh. But like, Brian was really cool. He's like, yeah, just get water, sleep here, go back in the next day. That's you, fine. You lucked out. Yeah. I, was, I, I think it's because you didn't really quit. It was like your body. True, my body was that's, like, yeah. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. So then, so when, like, what am I trying to say? Like, when did you start 
combining the photography. Let's talk about your photography real quick. How'd you get into the photography, right? So I, I, um, I had a camera in college and I, I took like some photo classes. It was awful. Um, <clears throat> I never actually got into photography until I started working for a photo company. Okay. Because when I started working for Olympus, so when I got out of college, I was actually a web developer. I used to do like back, back end, like server side applications, like yeah. super nerdy stuff. Um, so I got into Olympus around 2010 um, as just a graphic designer there. <clears throat> and I was like, well, I probably should use these cameras since I work for a camera company. Sure. Um, so in 2010, I just started using their cameras. And then um, in like, I think it was 2011, I started Primer Productions. Yeah. Which was like just taking random, I would just go everywhere because I was single. I didn't really, I was like, I could do whatever I wanted. I didn't have any, like, I just, I would just go and I would go to like Maine. Like I would go like really far places just to play airsoft and take photos. I, there was a period of time there might've been around the Red Storm two-ish time to a little bit past that where uh, every, every game that Mario and I went to, I was like, oh, there's Ted. Like yeah, every yeah. single one. Yeah, you, no, I tried you like to get you like played the first day, but then the second day mm-hmm. you had like yeah, the orange. that was my that was my entry fee. I would just for at least any Lou op, I would yeah, I would uh, I would play the first day and then I would take photos the second. That's crazy. I mean, he flew me out to Milwaukee. Um, I remember you were oh, talking yeah. about that game. Yeah, because I was there. Yeah, he flew I, me out to that game. Yeah, there's a photo of me that you took at that. Game. Yeah, yeah. So I was like at the mall one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the mall one. That was yeah. the first mall game they did. That was the, the nice mall. The next mall game after that was the one where they're like we're tearing this down in a month so wreck it oh that was fun the top uh, yeah the ohio top, yeah. that yeah. was fun that was fun shit uh okay so uh, i do this with everybody as well i i type some stuff into chat gpt <laughs> and it generates some questions okay and sometimes they're good sometimes they're not we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna jump on in it <laughs> outstanding child the smiggy 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 bold bold, bold. you wanted random things there you Here's go random thing number one there's number one <laughs> <laughs> is that stuff still like insanely sweet? Oh, this is uh, the gre- uh, just with jinx and honey. It's not really all that oh. sweet. It's how, very good. How much added sugar? Is Look on the back. Let's see. What it's probably like 40. 48. Yep. Yeah. 48 yeah, grams. Yeah. yeah. I don't, what's the World Health Organization, which we can't trust anymore, <laughs> but what's their, their day, daily recommended dose of uh, added sugar is like three grams? You, uh, you're doing good, fella. I'm doing great. Computer's over there. I can't even look it up for you. That's all right. You're on this side of the <laughs> yeah, camera, I know now, brother. Weird. Now we just have to wing it, just say stuff, and hope it sticks. Oh, God. And let the internet sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one, um, well, the one thing, the one thing that COVID did give me was diabetes, so that was cool. Good for you. You Wait, got what? something wow. out of the Yeah, deal. that was cool. Yeah. Shit, you and Wilford Brimley. <laughs> it was it was uh, it was awesome. So I I was like, I gotta cut like all this sugar out of my life. So, I mean, I don't remember the difference between type one and type two. Uh, which one did you? I have type two. Is that the one that can be controlled? Or is yes. Just, okay. So I'm actually in remission. Oh, good for you. I kicked my, my, I was like 215 and like sitting in my basement and eating snacks working yeah. like all the time. So like I lost like 45 pounds. Good for you. And then wow. now I just, but I try to keep like our airsoft ag group. Is like we try to do stuff to keep ourselves in in shape, and that's why I'm running the stupid Spartan <laughs> Super. Hey man, in, in it, July. <laughs> I dig it. I'm I'm on my own weight loss journey. Crazy how that works. So Still get going. healthy, and you're you get a little better. Yeah, well, right? I we've we we've discussed this in our dad group, which is weird for me to say, but my kid when he turns 13 and is able to play airsoft, I will be 52. I'm in, and still playing airsoft. Well, hopefully, I'm in that same boat. We just had our we just had uh, our son. I was thirty nine, so when he's twenty, I'll be fifty nine. I'm thirty nine. Yeah, I'll be fifty nine. So you're one year older than I am. Yeah, I'm thirty nine. Huh. Yeah, yeah, we're getting old, right? I know. Jeez, I did see that you graduated in what two thousand three? Uh, from high school, yeah. Yeah, it was two thousand three. I was in second grade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing we didn't Jeez. talk about. Uh, with oh, your right. with your epic rise in airsoft was um, uh, VOA. Oh jeez! Oh, yeah. How did VOA get started? You... Um. So. Uh, well, first off, uh, what's VOA stand for? <laughs> Violence of action. Hell yeah! Yeah. So, uh, so I, I to backtrack a little bit. I I, um, I met some Filipinos who per- apparently Filipinos are really big in airsoft, and Philippines is insane with airsoft. Like, there's no limits. 
Have you seen their like speed soft it's lead? It's ridiculous. So there's no FPS limits. It's yeah. really just like <laughs> with like 500. Wow. That's that's yeah, like the no bueno. On YouTube, I like can feel 500 that. 500 FPS, no med, full auto. <clears throat> M4s this big and yeah. they're like bunkering each other. I'm like, Ooh. yeah. Bunkering while while spinning the high cap <laughs> yeah. while they're shooting. Well, they're right. using like the double drums. And yeah. It's like, no wonder why you guys are all wearing like full like army of two face, bro. Yeah. I So before smartphones and all that, so we remember. Uh, that? when you went to the bathroom, there was magazines, right? And I had an airsoft magazine in there and I was, there was a, an article about a Filipino op, right? Uh, in the Philippines, it was called op terrorist sim. Right? <laughs> and, uh, so one team like the government forces, right? The one team, their chrono limit was 600. The other team didn't have a chrono limit. Oh, yep. That, yeah. I don't care if it's 600 with 0.12s. Yeah, it's insane. That's going to get you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. But I, I met up with a bunch of Filipinos um, from New York, uh, Phil Force. That's right. And uh, the head of the team was actually the, oh, man, this is going back. He was the embassy leader for the Philippines from the U.S. Um, so he was the Philippines embassy amb ambassador? Ambassador, I think. Something like, something really high. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so he was he was leading that team. Um, and we used to, uh, do you remember Moondog? I do remember. Yeah. So he used to run all those, like these, these crazy ops down in like, um, New Jersey and your old field. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, I don't think he did anything in your new field cause he moved out to LA by the time you mo moved. No, there was talk about doing bad blood there, but then they went down the street cause they had just had more acreage cause they oh, get yeah, like yeah, 1300 yeah. people. In mm -hmm. yeah. And now they have it like, um, up in, uh, in PA. <clears throat> um, but, um, they were very active and I love food. And Filipinos love food. So we would just like play airsoft in the morning and then just have like crazy amounts of food for lunch. And then no one would want to play it. Again. <laughs> but like, that's like, that's what they would do. And then I, I was realizing that like, I wanted to um, start something local. Mm -hmm. um, and no one really had like a kind of a national team back then sure. um, locally. So I started VOA. And then uh, how many members did you have in VOA? Oh, back then it was like 26. Shit, you were rolling deep. Yeah, we were. We all had like the VOA 01 up to 26. Cause that was a big thing. I remember yeah. like we ordered a bunch too. And I don't like, little like call it's not sign a thing, thing anymore. Not really. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the, the call sign things. It's like. They're like reflective. Now it's just like meme patches. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah but those meme patches are great. Just, just, I guess it's just how it the industry incredible. changes. So, so did you guys do like training or anything like that? We did. We did some at your field. Oh, you did? Yeah. We did some of those the night training at your field. We did. Um, the ones that like GMR ran? Uh, no, we did. We hosted our own. Uh, at the old field? No, no new, the new one. I, I think that. we were piggybacking on like something that you guys were doing during the day. And then we would just come in like when you were closing down and we, and you guys were just grilling. I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. That's you were right, like, we're right, just right. going to be chilling here. And I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. And then. We'll yeah. I remember you. that. Um, but yeah, we used to, we, back, we had the grid code. Do you remember that place? It was, no one remembers that place. I, I've heard the name. I've never been there. It was like this, it was just tires and like cardboard in like this warehouse in Allentown that we used to, I used to go there almost every day. It was five minutes from my house. Yeah. And we would all just meet up there, play, and then we'd do like our training and we'd go, I, I would watch like all these training videos and be like, okay, we're going to do this kind of training. Yeah. Cause I had like, I'm like a dirty civilian. I have no idea what I'm doing. So. <laughs> it's airsoft, even, yeah. you know, me with a military background, it like 10% applies, you know, yeah. and the rest you just got to figure out. Yeah. By so we, shot, used, we used to do like, but I mean, all of us were, this was like what, 15 years ago. Yeah. Ish. So we were all single. We all didn't do, we didn't have any, yeah, the time. We were just, yeah. Yeah. The time. To all the time. <laughs> I think it's awesome, man. I think, uh, I think, <clears throat> I think in, in the airsoft community, I think more people need to come together and actually train. It doesn't matter what you train. It doesn't matter if it's 10 years old, five years old, whatever, uh, the material. But as long as you guys get together and just work with each other, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're going to be 10 times better than the group that just claims to be an airsoft team, has a has a Instagram page, takes a bunch of pictures, but they never really play together. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's a, and it's a camaraderie and whatnot. And you'll be more effective. Yeah, no, the camaraderie was what kind of, kept us together yeah i think i wrote like back in the day i used to read like write these articles i know like there's i used to I, I had one from 2012 or something it's called making a, making the team yeah and it was like find find friends first because yeah. that's what's going to keep your team together like not don't find like the person who's like the best airsofter 
because they're just going to be like, there's off. And you're like, most of us now, we're just, we just hang out. We'll go like get food, go to an airsoft game, probably play for like a little bit, chill in the parking lot, yeah. and then just go get more food. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's. I'm sensing know. a theme here with oh, the I food. Oh, I love food. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the two games before lunch, the one game after lunch, and then you're done for the day. I was that's I a would, good routine. Like yeah. I love that you guys installed that snack bar because I'm always going up and oh, I'm like, yeah, yeah empanadas. Oh, you oh, can I have five, please? <laughs> oh man, they had some breakfast ones for AMS and the oh. sausage that was in them was so on I'm point. I'm really upset that I missed AMS this year. It's pretty good, man. We had good weather and uh good t- yeah. they had like four hundred and fifty. I couldn't people. get out of the house because I had to I had an event the, the day before I was shooting. So I was like, yeah. I can't just you didn't miss too much. Just a bunch of fires from the Enola Gay. Uh, what are they? Oh, the uh, the Flash 3.0. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Someone yeah. punched a, a complete wall panel off in the process. Well, I, I told him he, he the next time he comes out to play for open play, it's on me. So I guess one, like we had a real world. Guy twisted uh-huh. his ankle and everybody yeah. overreacted. I mean, the, the call on the radio was like, You'd have thought compound fracture, blood spewing out, oh, arterial yeah. bleeding. <laughs> yeah. We need a tourniquet. You know? And then you, you arrive and you're like, I just fell in a hole. Yeah, he literally like. Twist anyway, he twists his ankle. So while that's all happening, somebody's like, somebody so throw a smoke grenade. And we look over in CQB and there's like not smoke grenade smoke. Oh, geez. And so everybody starts running. And I, and, um, I was still dealing with the, the real world. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I guess, did you run over there? Yeah. So I, me and another dude were the first responders and pretty much what had happened was that this flame from, I don't know if it was a smoke or anything. I didn't even see a cartridge, but this fire had start, it started catching on the panel and, uh, (laughs) we're, we're trying to put it out. We're trying to try to stomp it. And all of a sudden this dude on the other side of the building just starts punching the wall panel. He literally just is like WWE, just punching it bare knuckle. Oh my God. Yeah. No. So punches it off. Uh, and we he, get water. He fought the fire. Out. He literally fought the <laughs> so, fire. He, the guy was a hero. Oh so we talked about this briefly on Sunday after this happened. I have a t-shirt idea for this. <laughs> the, oh, dude, firefighter. So hear me out. It is a, a wall on fire, and there is a fist punching straight through the fire, <laughs> and it's got a Glock in his hand, and yes. it says under it, Fighting fires and firefights. There you go. That's pretty good. I, I like that. I think we make that a shirt. Can we, can we find that shirt. guy and give him? I know exactly. Shirt. Oh yeah, no, he's uh, he's got his own Instagram thing. Like, oh, you want to shout him out? I know his Instagram. Yeah, go ahead because I always forget. Milson Peanut. Oh yeah, Milson Peanut. Yeah, if you guys know about Milson Peanut, go ahead and give him a follow, a like, whatever. Oh, wow. However, you internet guys do. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize it was Peanut that did that. Yeah, he literally yeah. punched awesome. the wall off of the jail in CQB because it was on fire. That's yeah. crazy. I probably would have kicked it instead of punching it. No, but this guy, this guy, that idea. I was like, why'd you punch it? Why'd you just kick it? Hindsight's 2020. Well, he was like, I was just in it, man. I was yeah. trying to save it. Because no, apparently the fire, like on the outside of the building, it was like whatever. But on the inside, it was like making its way oh up the wall. God, yeah. So he was like, crazy. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, I, will, <laughs> I, I will attest, it was extremely badass. There, yeah. there, Everything about it was just badass. This wow. guy just absolutely sending it onto this wall panel. <laughs> Does he have a video of this? I don't no. know. No, no, no. I no. think he, he might. He wears he, a GoPro. Yeah. He might. Have. That would have been. You should just see him just like going at the yo, wall. Yo, yo, so Milson Peanuts sent us that footage, man. We'll yeah, make, that'd be you awesome. you have that, I'm putting it in the podcast. Absolutely. I want to see that. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Well, that was pretty dope, but the fire wasn't. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so so somebody had, uh, I already forgot what they're called, EG 3.0s yeah, or whatever. Yeah, Flash 3.0s. Flash 3.0s. Yeah. I think even EG was like, these are a bit irresponsible. So they stopped <laughs> making them. Well, this kid had like. So when I went down there, he had 125 left. Left. And they were going off left and right, like during the night portion. This kid had 200 of them. He had to have had 200. Well, I asked him how many he started the weekend with. Long story short, there was a guy selling them in the parking lot. And oh, he was wonderful. Like, Great. And, and he was like, uh, around 500. Oh. And I'm like, oh, that's oh. why everyone here has them. Because oh. You know. Yeah. And you could tell the difference because they're, they're kind of like a th- the old school thermos. Mm-hmm. Like that's how they sound. And we all know that thermos, like... How do they Start work? They fire. shoot fire out yeah. the bottom. Like that's yeah. how they go. So um, wasn't so bad on Saturday. Saturday night wasn't an issue. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, but then Sunday, every time Jordan and I heard one go off, you had to run over there. We just got ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're like, cease fire, fire. I'm like, okay, guys, like maybe uh yeah, maybe we don't those. Yeah. I went out on the field at like 10 o'clock Sunday morning to try and take photos. By noon, I had put out five fires. Yeah. Do you remember? Did you do, do wow, this is this is going back. Do you remember those Fort Drum? 
games? I that was just slightly before my time. Oh, we used slightly. to use thermobaric grenades that you'd have to like twist yeah, off the, the top strikers. and strike them. Yeah, those throw. were the old uh, TLS effect strikers. Oh, Mario had a bunch of those. Yeah, like, when I first met Mario, a bunch of those. His garage. They're those they're were... really cool. Like it, they're strange, right? So actually, he brought some to West Point. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so like outside of a building, they're just kind of like boom. Yeah. But if you throw one in the room, it's like. It's Loud, it's loud deep, man. Flash. Like it'll make your ears ring. It, yeah. It's it's those are sweet for for mountain environments. Those are sweet. Actually, Mario, uh, we went to an op on West Point, one of their training grounds, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the cadets were putting on. I think it was a fundraiser, or whatever. But we were like, the kind of mooge, like mooge dressed down. Yeah, right? yeah. Mario had a backpack full of these freaking oh, things. Right. He <laughs> was like, we took over this building, and I see Mario running, uh, and then there's smoke coming out of his backpack. And he's like trying to get this thing off. Oh my god! I guess a thermo had gone off inside of that oh backpack. No. Yeah, dude. It, it was. I was like, oh damn! Like we threw a bunch of those in there. Yeah. Like, no, I remember b- buying those, and I'm like, this is so cool. I mean, this this is like the pinnacle of airsoft back then. Oh yeah, dude. Made a loud bang, and yeah. it's cool. Yeah, man. Uh, now, unfortunately, you know, tags with the ATF and everything. It, yeah. It is. This was pre-tag is. though. This is way pre-tag. Yeah. yeah. Actually, like pea grenades were. Oh, they were the like, same company. just on this just on this like just on the scene then yeah we were throwing those with like dog um what's it those tennis ball throwers oh, the tennis oh, ball. Yeah. 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 we used to throw those pea, pea grenades with the tennis ball throwers we have a connor whenever whenever we need to uh mortar anybody with a tag grenade we're just like connor take it <laughs> he played like like d1 baseball oh, or wow. something. He, he, dude he's got a cannon for an arm <laughs> he just throws them out there shit what were we talking we we're talking about voa right Oh talking yeah, about yeah. VOA and then like VOA. bridging airsoft and photography. That's where you want to go. No, I'm just saying that's what we were talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've done you've done work for Lions Claw, right? You, you took pictures with them. Yeah. Did you do anything else uh, professionally with uh, any other producers? Um, I mean, I would just come out to games just to, you know, for myself. Okay. Like I'd come to you guys. I would go to like. Um, we also did a. What's it called? What's his name? What's his name? It's the night. It's Obsidian. always this night. No, no, no. Black. M. Sato. Oh, M. Sato. Tom yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom. And then I saw on your resume, which is amazing, by the way. We'll get into that. <laughs> he, said, he told me to send me a resume. I'm like, oh, yeah, here. Well, Dave and I were in the shop last amazing. night like, joking around. And I'm like, oh, Ted's text, texting me asking if he needs to bring anything for tomorrow. And Dave's like, I don't know, his resume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> did, little did I know in like 60 seconds. Oh, Ted sent me his resume. Like, Yeah. I mean, you, your well resume is resumes. so engaging. Like. Like most people's resumes look like that, right? This is what I did. You have like little circles and it's it's almost yeah. like you've got like level up skills. You know what I mean? And you're just like, oh, what's when I was looking at it, I was like, what's next? There's almost like a like a choose your own adventure. Amazing resume. Oh, thanks. Amazing, amazing resume. But anyway, I saw that uh, you had patch panel on there. You get you did Yeah, like, I used to um so every uh they used to have this uh, patch club. Um I used to be a member of that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I was really sad to see it go. Yeah, I mean it got crazy. I know. Yeah. yeah. So every month they would come out with a patch and um I would have to design the uh the um little artwork um card that came with it. Oh cool. Yeah. And by doing that, I would get like um patches from them. So it was like I'm trying and to that would patches. that would that would run my low speed gear. Let's talk about low speed gear. <laughs> It's actually next to my little oh, list yeah. here. Let's talk about low-speed gear. So uh, I assume that that, you know, airsoft, airsoft photography, and then you're like, hey, man, let me try to make some stuff. Low-speed gear came about because I wanted to go to SHOT Show as a vendor and sit next to high-speed gear no. and, be yes. like, and be like, hey, um, uh, if you want anything real, go over here. But if you want some meme patches and T-shirts, <laughs> here you go, right here. <laughs> Did you? Did no, you ever, I never, I never uh, actually got there. Um, <laughs> but I really, like, you know, over the... I think I think it did like five five years. Over the five years I did it, it was it was a lot of fun. I was just like side stuff, like anything that interested me as the designer. I was like, oh, I can make a T-shirt out of that. Um, and then I just do random patches and and uh, stupid did you do stuff. A helmet cover at one point? <clears throat> no, I don't. Oh, no. okay. Because I, I know you do like the photos for A and A. Yeah, yeah. Helmet mm-hmm. cover, but I thought you had like your own. Because I remember the T shirts and the patches, but I didn't know if you had nylon gear as well. No, no, no. I wish that'd be awesome. That would be dope. Yeah. <laughs> so that I also saw. I don't remember where I saw this. Maybe this was on your face. So I, I stalk everybody just to oh, yeah, kind yeah, of generate course. questions. Whatever. Still some background. EDM music. Yes. Wait. Yes. You a connoisseur? I am a connoisseur of fine oh. EDM. Right. 
What does EDM stand for? I know what it means, but I'm just asking. Uh, for a well, okay. So if you talk to anyone who's really like into it, um, EDM can stand for a lot of things. Um, I mean, EDM is electronic dance music. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, depending on like the genre or the subgenre of the people are into, yeah. like they can really gravitate towards some interesting niche things. So you uh, like go on a, I guess it's a concert, right? EDM. You can concert, go to concerts. Right? You can go to festivals. You yeah. like. Glow sticking, glow sticking, yeah. raving, all that oh, stuff. Yeah. All right. So all... follow up question: Easier, yay or nay? I uh, loved it. Yeah. Yes. What you is have that? to be. You say that. What is it? You ha- uh... so Easier is one of the largest EDM festivals in the country. It's in New York City on Randall's Island mm-hmm. every Labor Day. Yeah. I've been twice, and it is amazing. It experience. is awesome. but it's also very young. Yeah. It's a very young crowd. Yeah. Like I felt like a dad With and like, I was like, I was like 35. Yeah. Like <laughs> everyone there is under the age of three. Yeah. But I mean, there's some old, there's some old heads there. Um, and the, the best thing about a festival, and we're not going to go like way down this yeah, rabbit hole, no, yeah, yeah. but, but the best fun. thing about a festival is that you can pay like what, $200 and you're there like for the weekend. And some of the best artists that you like follow yeah. you can see like you go to like a concert it's yeah. like $75 or $200 for like four hours yeah and this is like a whole experience and like the whole vibe is different because so. plus like Izu has seven stages every mm-hmm. year yeah on top of all the food vendors yeah. like headliners being like marshmallows that I've seen all of them at Izu yep. and 200 bucks for a three-day pass yeah it's, it's pretty awesome. dope yeah. like comic-con for EDM kids mm-hmm. weird yeah all I know is Skrillex well, you know what? Amazing. Oh boy, here it goes. <laughs> yeah, here it starts. I mean, it, that's kind of what <laughs> I pushed did. EDM music into like the limelight on modern music because you could find Skrillex on modern radio stations. Yeah, well, I, it was like one of the. It was like one of his like bigger. I shouldn't say bigger, but like more mainstream songs. Mm-hmm. It had like this creepy video with it and everything. And I was like, I dig it. Couldn't tell you the name of the song. I, <laughs> I can barely remember what it sounds it like. It was now. probably it's an cool. acid trip of a video. Uh, yeah, oh well, yeah, well, yeah, it was. <laughs> It was like it was ridiculous. Yeah, no, I love that stuff. I listen like if if you look through my Spotify, that's like the number one thing is like house music or like drum and bass. Oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah. We're we're going down his uh his resume yeah, right just, now. It's uh, just stacking up <laughs> phenomenal resume. Uh if it didn't have personal information, I would like post it as like a template. Dude. I can give you my curriculum vitae if it doesn't so, have personal information on it. There you go. <laughs> God, you're so professional, I dig it. <laughs> I have to be. I'm a professor. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's the next thing on the list. Adjunct professor at Raven University. There you go. Yeah, I've been teaching there for 15 years, so that tells you how old I am. I oh, graduated wow. and came back the next year. So are you teaching, teaching photography there? No, I'm not. Really? I'm teaching front end web development. Okay, so yeah. kind of in the same wheelhouse, but not quite. Right, and oddly enough, next semester I'm teaching um, senior portfolio and senior internship. Oh. So I'm actually responsible for more than what I used to do. So that's exciting and terrifying you said front end web development so that's like the actual design of the web page or so like you're you have the design of the web page and then like how you get it from design to like the user experience of like you actually typing in zulu24.com yeah and what you see is and like how that gets developed from that design oh i don't know what any of that means well it's an interesting (laughs) team because there's a lot going on there that people don't see Because like we just built the shop website probably month month and a half ago. Now, Shopify makes it really easy. Shopify but if does. you were trying to use, oh, I forgot, Moo Commerce from no, WordPress. No, we were <laughs> that's what the I started. One that started with, with an M. It, their logo is like an orange M and like a uh, oh Magento. We were trying yeah. Magento at first, mm-hmm. and it was a yeah, it's pain. That's ten thousand times um, harder. Yeah, but it's also ten thousand times more expandable and. Well, yeah, so that was something that we ran into because, like, you had an infinite number of ways to expand the website, mm-hmm. but me being someone that just needs a simple solution and basically like, copy paste, yeah, um, it was too much mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, yeah. Ohm System actually runs their e commerce off of the Magento. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and uh, Adobe owns that. Oh, I didn't they bought that. it two years ago. Neat. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that's what we Sorry, do. we just got that's what we yeah, do for we just, our website. We're just also. really nerding out on that's nice fine. Hey, that's fine. We that's just fine. stare a look at each other. It's like, yeah, we know exactly what yeah. they're talking about. I run a everything. Square website. I just post hey, you know pictures. But Square is really good too because it makes it easy because like you run the Zoom yeah, website man. off of Square and Anthony runs his tech business off of Square. I tell you what, it's not the most flashy thing, and I know that like uh because my buddy Josue was just like, Look, he like did a whole mock up of the Zulu website, and I was like, That looks amazing. Can I make changes right? now and he's like no yeah go mm-hmm. and i'm like i look man this sh- this stuff's very fluid 
and dates change and, and all yeah. this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I get, I get Ajita just thinking about now I got to call somebody. To yeah. And it integrates date. with your uh, POS system too. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I can put mm-hmm. tickets. I can do all ticket sales through my yeah. website. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, they take a little chunk, but in my opinion, it's worth it. That's, I mean, same thing with, uh, with, yeah. with Shopify. Yeah. They take a chunk, but I mean, it's, yeah, but yeah. Having it's a convenience thing to link like the in-store yeah. inventory, mm-hmm. even though we're using Clover, you could still link Clover to Shopify <clears> and having the inventory accurate. So a customer can go online, place an order and it still takes it out of both POS systems. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So simple. And it's all linked up and everything. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, so cool. Uh, let's talk real gun. Let's talk freedom for a minute. <laughs> You're, I'm in. I I live in Pennsylvania, so we are, we are a pretty free state. Yeah, man. What the heck? Uh, you got like suppressors and all sorts of shit over there, man. Yeah. Um, you guys do a lot of night shoots. Where are you doing that at? So I um, I backtrack a little bit. 2015, I went to Milson West and I got my first pair of night vision, which is like a like Gen that. two plus. Yeah. I didn't even know that you could focus night vision back then. Oh, so shit. like for oh. the first whole night, I was like, man. <laughs> I can kind of see things, but they're a little blurry. And then like the second night, they're like, my friend was like, oh yeah, you know, you could turn that. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So sad. there, that's, that's my intro to night vision was Milson West, which I also, he cast that. Um, but like, <clears throat> so fast forward to like, uh, two years ago, um, my, uh, my wife was, was, uh, having our son soon. And I was like, you know what, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out what to do with this kid. And then like all of the children's places like kept losing people. So like for like COVID or like they quit. So we had, uh, we had, we, we were supposed to actually have Jack go to a, uh, a childcare place, but then they didn't have room. Yeah. So my wife's like, well, you know what? I mean, she's a nurse and she's like, I'm going to quit my job. And I'm going to be a stay home mom. And I'm like, so what do, what do I do? Do I just make up this? You make the money. So I make up the money. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Like oddly enough, um, the graphic designer at Night Vision Devices was my student oh, in cool. 2013. Nice. And they were looking for a uh, social media coordinator, and I was like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> nice. So I got that, and then so I actually I try to attend every night shoot at University Rifle Club. It's in Reading, um, so I can get content. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really awesome. Yeah. Now, I mean, obviously, you're there to get content, but I imagine you're doing shit. Oh, yeah. Too. yeah, absolutely. You, you can't just, you know, be behind the lines all the time. I think it's cool, too, because uh, I think I've seen some of it. And I think it's cool that whatever range you're at, I mean, you can, like, actually move and you're not just yes, in a booth. You're not behind a booth. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. man. You guys actually do, tra- like, training out there? Like- <clears throat> um, we try to, like, we do a little bit of training. There's, like, there's like a range one. There's, like, it's about 50 yards. Um, and you can kind of, like, if you just starting a night vision like we'll tell you how to zero stuff and like this is kind of like how you can be safe yeah um and then for the rest of it uh it's very very it's kind of set up like a um like a uspsa match almost but it's very it's like it's time but it doesn't really count yeah and if the first person who who has the best time they get like a get a giveaway or something yeah um but it's super like laid back the group there is awesome um and the biggest problem I have with people who have night vision is they don't use it. Like they buy, they spend like seven, eight thousand dollars and they'll like use it once. They'll look at the stars. They'll be like, oh, that's really cool. And then they'll put it away in their case with their batteries in it. And then the batteries leak and you're like, that's not how you store your night vision. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so that's what I really liked about Airsoft. Yeah. Like you could still, you spend the money because it's completely a pay to win. Yep. Um, but you spend the money, you get to use it in a, uh, uh, opposing force situation, which range, nothing shooting back. Nope. Yeah. And I, I've told these guys too. I was like, <laughs> I, I spent more time under NVG at all the Milson West than I ever did in the military. Right. And it's just like the other things too, like learning how to walk, mm-hmm. learning how to run. Yeah. You know, like, like learning how to scan because you, you've only got that, whatever, 40 degrees of vision, mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, yeah. there's a lot of things. And, and so if you're, if you're doing the night vision for the boogaloo or whatever the hell, you know, end of society, <laughs> whatever, you yeah. need to put those things on your head mm-hmm. and actually, and, and run, get to the point where you can run through the woods com- comfortably. Yep. Right. Yeah. Because that's, that's what you're going to need to do. Yeah. And I tell, I tell people who are just getting into them, like reload, it's like do reloads in the Oof. dark because you're going to be it's like, hard. where's my magwell? You, so, <laughs> Like uh, when I first got my night vision and and I was messing around in my backyard or whatever, like 
I did that. I went to reload. You don't realize how much you're actually looking mm -hmm. at the gun. Yeah. You think you're looking at your target or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where I had to close my eyes. I had to close my eyes to do reloads uh, because the vision was just throwing me off. Yeah. And I, and I got a lot better at it. I'm still clunky oh, to this day. I mean, day, I'm, like, all, I'm, it's always, unless you do it like all the time. Yeah. Um, I do it once a month and I'm still clunky. Yeah. Like I, I got an MP5 and I was like, oh God. What am I? Oh, I got to keep this bolt open. What is this? Like, I'm so used to the like M4 platform that I'm, I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I imagine there's not a lot of slop to getting that tiny mag into the tiny mag. Well. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I have videos. It's awful. <laughs> Cause I, I always forget to take the, like, like I, I was talking to one of my MP5 friends and he's like, whenever you're doing any manipulation, bolt back. Yeah. And like I, I just had to get into that because I knew the first, I would just drop the mag and be like, Oh, uh yeah <laughs> and then you, uh, under night vision on yeah it's awful it. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh chat gbt time <laughs> gbt time pt time uh so basically i put in like uh airsoft photographer you know and it just kind of came up with some questions let's see how it goes okay i actually didn't read these because i printed them off this morning i was like <laughs> late to the field i had a flat tire this morning as well oh that's nice. yeah super fun uh, didn't help that I hit the snooze twice also. It's, it's my fault as well. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's every morning after a night game. Oh, the night games suck. I mean, they're fun. I just, I really wanted to come to that too. Working them is it yeah. was great. different. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I have, I literally, I have a tracer unit specifically cause I wanted to go to a night game and use it with my knots. Should we talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, let's they, do it, uh, man. The night game went now having night vision and thermals introduced again. Uh, I, th I think it went well. We had like, so for for a no MVG tracer units, mm -hmm. we usually get about eighty, yeah, yeah, eighty plus players. Dude, those are wild. Like mm -hmm. they look amazing. The, the fights are awesome. Uh, so I was like, man, I don't know, man. You you introduce night vision. I mean, it's still a huge advantage, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we still had forty dudes, and they all came out and played. And it was great. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, and it was about a fifty percent nod to no nod. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and base. like in the past with no tracer units and all that stuff, it's like once the sun goes down. You play one game. Everybody with with MVGs is like, "Yo, that was awesome." Everybody without MVGs is like, "Here's my armbands. I'm going home." Yeah, because uh, they just don't want to get shot. And I, I, yeah, you know, I don't. Get no, it. I understand it. Yeah, exactly. I was one of those guys. But but introducing the tracer unit now, mm -hmm. there's potential. I'm not going to say it's perfect. It's a, not a perfect system, but there's potential. If he has MVGs, I do not, and you do not. He shoots me. You see his tracer, and then you, you shoot, shoot him. him. Yep. Yeah, that the, yeah. happened to me last night. The potential is still <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, no. And yeah, think it's a good balancing mechanic, and and uh, it seemed to work very well last night. Yeah, actually. and it's really funny is I um back when VOA used to host games, which is a long time ago, um we were trying to come up. The, we had this game called The Darkness that was supposed to be I don't remember cookies. Oh, I think I think it was the cookies. Um. But we were supposed to have that, and uh, that's what we were going to do with the with the because we wanted to have a night portion, um, but we were um, worried that people in the day, like people who didn't have night vision, like how how could we equalize the playing field? Yeah. And tracers was kind of like the thing that we were like, well, we should do that. It's really the only thing you can do yeah. besides just like giving everybody night vision. Right, yeah. and, and now with the airsoft arms race, thermals are the next thing. It was like, dude, uh, thermals yeah, and yeah. that last Milson West, I was just like, this is like. I thought I thought night vision was like magic goggles. This this is like it's cheap. Of the future. It's wall I'm hacks. Like, it's, take a look at this. It's insane. It's freaking wall hacks. I will say though, using the thermal last night, it doesn't defeat thermal at all. But as soon as I start shooting, you now know exactly where I am. Yeah. And that happened multiple times. I would start picking off dudes and then immediately a support gun would trace you. And it's just like, oh, somebody's over there. Yeah. So it does kind of even the playing. Yeah. No, that's cool. It's never going to even it, right? <laughs> right. I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Pay I mean, to win, but it's yeah. Pay to win. We used to sneak around and just shoot, shoot people in the butt. Just boop. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, you can't <laughs> really do that. Just run away. Yeah. <laughs> but also being a dude that has night vision and thermals, that was so fun using tracer units. Yeah, oh, yeah dude. It just looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and through MVGs, it looks even cooler. Like you see the BBs shatter when they hit mm -hmm. like a wall or something. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So or just like straight up bounce off of their plate carrier. Like I... That happened a couple times yeah. last night. You would see the BB hit him and then fall to the ground. I'm like, oh, there's no denying I hit you because that was square on. Well, that's <laughs> the other thing. Uh, one of the players actually came up to me and he was like, this is great. He's like, uh, there's zero hit calling problems. I mean, not that we have any that much anyway, but 
uh, he was like, there's zero because they see the BB come in and hit him. And yeah. it's like, there's no denying it. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, well, That's what I liked about your field though. I like, um, I didn't really have problems. It's, it's few and far between. We yeah. try to stomp on it real quick. We yeah. also like, I, I won't go into long rant about it, but, um, we really harp on you take care of you. Don't worry about the other guy. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, if everybody yeah. takes care of you, then, then you're good. Call your hits. Don't call his, yep. you know? Yeah. Uh, if you yell, call your hits, we're going to make fun of you and tell you to be quiet. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Um, yeah, we try to stomp that stuff out. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, just, we just go off. No, 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 that's fine. I mean, no, we kind of needed to with the whole night game thing because players are going to ask about it. And yeah, yeah. There yeah. are a bunch of photos and videos that will be coming out in the following week. Awesome, like, yeah. What happened that night? Using your new camera? Wait, 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 yeah, wait. We'll wait. get there. Wait, wait, see but, this one? When we we'll yeah, get there, you guys can we'll get there. But <laughs> in, overall, though, because yeah. I know like a lot of players already started asking at the field mm -hmm. today, like, how was it? Yeah, yeah. And now that we have won the media from it, but also yeah. the word of mouth is starting to spread. <clears> yeah, it was, it it was, was good. worth it. Yeah, mm -hmm. It was good. I think moving forward, we'll see a bigger turnout. For That's good. Games. Yeah. I think so too. Mark was yeah. asking me about that because he's the only person I really play airsoft with much. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's a good dude. I like Mark. <laughs> So, number one, how did you get started in airsoft photography? What drew you to the specific niche? I think we already covered that a little bit, right? But, I mean, I was into photography, so I was playing airsoft, and like, uh, so I was like, maybe if I, I used to use this huge, and I, I could probably have a photo of it somewhere, this huge rig with like a big Lexan piece of glass in, in front. I think I remember it that. It was like really, it was Just real janky. The camera? Yeah, because I used to do video a lot. I used oh, to okay. do a lot of video. Yeah. And then I was like, Man, this sucks. <laughs> you using like one of the big generic like steady cams with like glasses. Yeah, yeah, it was from like it was it was like this Chinese thing from Amazon. Yeah, uh, yep. And it was just like it had it was like a, one of those barn doors, mm -hmm. and I would just duct tape the the Lexan front. Oh, it was awful. So still having one, <laughs> very useful for that exact reason. Oh, it still so holds janky. Up today. <laughs> Ooh, here's an interesting one. Number two, how has airsoft photography evolved over the years, specifically airsoft photography, right? What changes have you observed in terms of equipment, techniques, and overall community? My equipment or the airsoft? Equipment? I don't know. This is up to you. Oh, for interpretation. man. Um, <clears throat> I've, and this is more just like as a player too, uh, like I mean, back in the day, everybody used to wear like cross draw vests and boonie hats. Hell yeah, man. And it wasn't until like 2012 or so people started using, um, those masks like back in the day we used to like have these shemogs on yeah and if we went into a building we we're like oh. oh mario used to do all the time yeah we just bite, bite down at it and then right are you talking about like the balaclavas yeah or the iron faces no like any mask yeah any like Lord like we did legit we would just go out in the forest with just like literally nothing <laughs> and just shoot people <laughs> i mean yeah but now, like in terms of technology, face protection has come a long way. Yes, yeah. I we actually bought those. Uh, the that guy from the UK that makes those uh, balaclavas though, with the oh, uh, Cygnus. Like, yeah, yeah. I, got, I bought like four of those things. Those, those ones really... have like the carbon fiber, mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to. That's get pretty cool. Store. So did you bring up face masks only because when you're when you're photographing, like you could get people's faces, and now it's like it's everybody's it, obscured kind. It's of. more like um, it, it's it's interesting that people are more worried about their face now. Cause like back in the day, people just didn't care. And the teeth, like I would see teeth. I, I just lost tooth. I'm like, that sucks. Yeah, it does. Like <laughs> Do as an adult who has to yeah. pay for medical bills, <laughs> it sucks. that sucks. Like I, mm, mm. Do you wear face protection when you're taking photos? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I was gonna say, I you get shot way more than as like, I get shot way more as like yep. all orange yeah. carrying a camera. than I get yeah. shot as a player. It's, I mean, <laughs> you're also putting yourself in the middle of sure, firefights. Yeah. So that's probably why, but that's where the action multiple there. players will probably attest to this. I tell them, I'm like, I get shot more when I'm refing and taking photos than when I'm actually playing. Yeah. Sure. No. And it's like, I'm holding a camera and they're like, oh, I thought it was a gun. I'm like, yep. yeah, hell of a, um, be a hell of a gun. Yeah. It's the, ID, please. It's the monkey brain neuron starting. <laughs> Even when you tell it them, just sees like, Cameron in like, Hey, there's a ref shoot. or a photographer on the other side of this wall. Please don't shoot me. They pop around. They're like, Whoa! I used to, uh, back in, when I used to do red storm photography for oh, lion yeah. claws, I used to have this like little Bluetooth speaker that I would play battlefield music on and I just oh, stick it in my dope. jump pouch so that whenever I was around, people knew yeah. that I was around. So they wouldn't like go around the corner and be like, ah, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just a camera guy. 
Number three, what are some challenges you face as an airsoft photographer? How do you overcome them? Uh, always the lens. Always worried about the oh, lens. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I always I buy the stupid expensive um, UV filters from like Hoya, I think. They're like $125, but rather get that shot out than like a $4,000 lens. Have you ever had a lens get shot out? No. Oof. Just just the filters. Thank you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> As I'm, I'm sitting here thinking the same thing because I saw Kalari has the UV filters. I'm like, that's probably not yes. a bad idea. <laughs> yes, do much, that. How much are the UV, fil- UV filters? Uh, I think the Kalari ones are like 200. Yeah, they're expensive, but it's it's yeah, the it's glass better. is worth it. Yeah. I was gonna say it's better yeah. than that. Number four, can you share some memorable moments or experiences you've had while capturing airsoft events or players? <clears throat> I um, when smoke grenades got big, like a, when Anola Gay came out. Yeah. Um, like back before that, it was all sports smoke. I think that yeah. was like the only company. Yeah. Um, and when Anola Gay came out with like all their colorful ones, yeah, they introduced the colors. People like whenever someone throw it, I was just like, oh, gotta go over there because there'd be really cool photos. Yeah. Um. So, and just like the places that I've gone to, just photograph like i got flown out to milwaukee to that mall game yeah, that mall like game. that was really cool um and uh i don't know it's just it's the gratification of everybody changing their fo- their profile picture after a game and it, you oh, know, it's it's yours. Yeah. yeah 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 you put water water marks on your i do face? but i don't really care like yeah. i whenever i take airsoft photography i'm not being paid yeah so it's really just i'm coming out supporting the community and uh People like getting dope pics of themselves. That's all it is, man. People love That's all yeah. it is. Dope. Get that IG club. <laughs> I will say, like, since we started, like, going full speed with the Zulu photos, players love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's big on that. And you see it all the time because they tag the account. Like, hey, mm-hmm. look, I got these cool photos of Zulu. Yeah, yeah. No. Before like, I yeah. started working there, I always wanted to make sure if Jordan was taking pictures because, it, you know, <laughs> like, literally, it weakens... Every weekend, that's what I was hoping for. Because, you know, it sure, every picture that comes out, if it's dope enough, it goes up on the gram. But it's also like, it helps Zulu. It helps the whole community. It's like, it's something that players look forward to. Mm-hmm. Another thing that they look forward to every weekend. Yeah, I also, just so everyone knows, because like a lot of players haven't realized that yet. The ones that are like, I pick them out, go on the Instagram, but every photo from the weekend ends up on Facebook. There's like 200 to 300 photos a weekend. It's great. You can find some real gems on there. Oh yeah, there's some great ones. I actually, I have a good one from this weekend of somebody like just completely eating it and going face first into the ground. (laughs) And he looks at me as soon as he gets up, he's like, did you get that? I'm like, yes, I did. Is my my gun okay? My arm's broken, but is my gun okay? (laughs) I ripped my cries. Damn it. (laughs) Oh God. Did I I look cool doing it at least? (laughs) Yeah, I think he asked that too. He's like, "Did it yep. look cool?" I'm like, it looked like something. <laughs> like, I, I told I told Jordan, something. I'm just like, "Look, man, when you take pictures of me, just like cheer up, man, because it just looks like a fat <laughs> free. I look like I look like a tube of toothpaste with rubber bands around it, and just trying to squeeze it out. You know, like, man, I bought my gear when I was in better shape. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna skip the little asterisk question because I know that's gonna be a deep dive rabbit hole. And also, this next one's kind of weird, and I'm. I'm curious about how you're going to answer this. Oh, okay. Uh Oh, how do you approach composition and storytelling in your airsoft photographs? Are there any specific techniques, techniques or tips you can share? So how do you tell a story? Um, well, I, oddly enough, when I do, when I do any of this, uh, when I, and it goes across all my photography, like if I'm doing wedding photography, if I'm doing airsoft photography, yeah. I always edit in chronological order and it's really weird to me if I'm editing something from here and one or like a photo got weirdly time stamped and it's like over I like I really like to see the progression of people in the parking lot, brief, like people loading up, then they're like walking to their I don't know, their spawn points or whatever. Like I really like kind of capturing all of that as like it goes. So if you ever see an album, you don't see like Someone in the parking lot at the end of the at the end of the game in the beginning because yeah. it messes with me. I'm the same kind of weird. So like I have to have it in like chronological order because that's how I remember it. And I'm like, I remember some of these shots and I like and I really like to kind of give someone the experience of they were there, yeah. but maybe they they couldn't make it or something like that. So sure. I, that's that's like how I do it. Um compositionally, um way back in the day I was used to shoot on a, a a camera that only had like four focus points. So I'd have to like focus and recompose for photo people. That's like a 
used to be a thing. Now, like my camera has like a thousand focus points. Um, but I, I'm not a, like a, a very technical person when yeah. it comes to photography. Uh, and people are going to be like, Ugh. I shoot in um, aperture priority for those photography people. I'm like, I'll let it, I let the camera do whatever. Oh, I'm just, I just know that I'm, I, I, I know what to get the good, like the right thing for the right picture. So, yeah. um, and for, fortunately with all our cameras now, they focus really quickly. So compositionally, I just like whatever I'm feeling at the moment, or if there's some cool leaf in the way, I always get something that creates some depth in that photo. Nice. So like weird question about cameras, cause you brought up aperture priority. I know for your, you put out a guide reference for night vision photography. Mm -hmm. And you just said like throw all the rules out the window. Do you do that in general too during daylight photography? Um, any of like the major rules where <laughs> photography for especially for airsoft photography, I put it auto ISO because sometimes I'm going in and out of like buildings or I'm going underneath trees. Um, auto white balance because I'm doing that too. Yeah, like literally, and the people who are really like stringent about this stuff don't have to deal with all of the weird things that you have to do when it comes to like action sports photography. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, our cameras are great and um, they really take care of a lot. So, I mean, you don't, I'm not shooting at full auto. Like no. I'm not like letting the camera do all the thinking, but I'm yeah. doing, doing a lot of the, letting There's the camera so do a lot. more that comes with a shot. Mm -hmm. Number seven. Do you have any favorite locations or settings for airsoft photography? What makes them stand out? I really enjoyed the lace factory. That was really cool really? because it was all overgrown. It had like this kind of like last of us. Um, I, I remember red storm two. I did it. I did the intro to our VOA video, like the, um, intro to, uh, Oh man, what was that the movie? Uh, walking dead. Oh, right on. Yeah. So if you, if you go back in the day, that was like 2013, 2014 ish. I got a story about Red Storm too. Keep oh yeah. <laughs> um, the VOA intro of that video is ju done just like Walking Dead. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I, I like, I like interesting places, but I mean, I, I love outdoor stuff. Yeah. Cause I, I'd rather just be outdoors. Sure. <laughs> so Red Storm too, right? Lace factory. Um, like weeks, I'm sorry, but a month prior, I got my two shot out, right? Cause Ooh. I didn't wear a freaking mouth. I played for like three or four years without a mouth guard and mm -hmm. it just happened one day and it sucked. It was like 700 bucks root canal, all that stuff. So oh. yeah, we went with, uh, with Mario and Danny and, yeah, you know, yeah, and everybody. Yeah. And, uh, as we were going there, I was like, there's a Walmart, let's go there. I bought a mouth guard and, um, I'm checking out at Walmart and they're like, Oh, you play sports? I was like, nah, I play airsoft. I just need a mouth guard. And she's like, oh, really? Why? And I was like, oh, I got my two shot out. And I said it like so nonchalantly, like <laughs> I got my two shot out. And then the lady was just like, what? And I was like, no, 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 no. It's just airsoft. It's different. Anyway, that mouth guard, I cannot throw that thing away. Yeah. I To this day, I still have that. It's so disgusting. I still have that mouth guard. I still use it. This, I used it today. I played today. Yeah. Oh and my I used god, it guard, dude! I still. I'm surprised you've been able to. And I have so lost long. it. I have lost it fifty times, like on the field, and then I walk right to there, and boom, it's right there. Yeah, I lost yeah. it at Milson West, right? So big, big attack, and there's like we're like trying to run up. There's like a BTR shooting and all this stuff, and and massive amounts of fire happening. We we're hiding, hiding behind a bus. And I just, I hit the bus and it came out of my mouth and it's on the ground. And I was just like having a panic attack because <laughs> I'm like searching on the ground and through night vision, you know, there's flat, there's white lights coming. Yeah, in. I'm yeah. just like feeling on the ground, like, where is it? Where is it? And I found it. I yeah. Just, I just, I can't get rid of that thing. It's really that, Before I use that, that UK guys stuff, I, I've had this like, um, air splat patch, the huge American flag air splat patch from like oh. 2012. And I would stick that in my bollock bottle. I've done that before. And I've had yep. that that patch is that yeah, that used to be like tan. It's like dark brown. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. it's got blood. Uh, <laughs> you awful. Got, it's it's all lined up <laughs> like awful. this. Yeah, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh, these questions are weird. <laughs> all right. Thanks, AI. Yeah, man. They're very got to got to love it. <clears throat> Are there any specific strategies or techniques you employ to capture the intensity and adrenaline of airsoft games in your photographs? Whenever I hear screaming or an LMG. 
I'll go towards that. Oh, I'll second yeah. that. LMGs. Yeah. Yeah. Because if there's <laughs> LMGs shooting at something, then you're like, oh, there's something happening. Yeah. Because usually they don't want to waste the BBs on oh, sure. stupid stuff. Like, if it's like a, a 30 round burst, all right, nothing major's going on. Or if, if it's, it's like a burr. If it's been 10 <laughs> seconds and that trigger is still may, being held down, all right, I'll go over there real quick. So yeah. neuron activated. Got <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. That, that's 20 guys trying yeah. to run across the field. And this guy's. Just Sometimes, gotta... like, I'll what I'll do is, like, if I know that they're like an active team, like, I know people who are just like, yeah, I'll play and I'll just like kind of walk around. But if I know they're like the tryhards, yeah, like I'll follow them because they're gonna try to do stuff and sure. I'll try to like get them doing stuff. But that's most of the time it's just like some firefight, badass photos. Yeah, mm-hmm. talking about teams and photos, I've seen that a couple times when I've been refing at Zoo. These teams that I may or may not know, the I can't name any by name right now, but they have their own photographers that actually like actively follow them and they only them. Yeah. They, they, they they hire their one guy to just follow them around all day, which I find it, it's not, it's a little bit weird to me maybe, but it's, but it makes sense to have that one guy that's following you everywhere. I, I saw that for the first time in like 2013, I think. And I was like, Oh, you're another event photographer. Like, they're like, no, I'm just following this one team. I'm like, Oh, Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw that for an M- Mstato event uh, in the power. Oh yeah, the, the nuclear pl- power that, plant. That plant. Yeah. yeah, that was a weird. That was a weird AO. Yeah, like the nuclear power plant lost power or some shit. Like it's fucking weird. <laughs> so the uh, weird thing is, there was a photographer at the field last weekend for AMS, and I was talking with him about it. And people hire him to do that still for MSW games. And he's like, I literally go to an MSW game and camp with them. And I walk around the field with them and like go on patrols and I don't bring a gun, just a camera. Combat camera, man. I was like, that's interesting. I do that, but with a gun. Yeah. I was going to say you did that with a gun. (laughs) Yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Well, my gun didn't do anything. I just made noise. I was going to say last (laughs) time it was blank fire and DSLR. (laughs) I wonder what the pay is for something like that. If they get hired. Probably not enough. Right. Yeah. Probably not. Maybe 10 years ago, I'd do that for like nothing. But now mm-hmm. I'm just like, no, I'm good. I, I think he said he did it for like two or three hundred bucks, Oof. which for an entire yeah, that ain't bad. I mean, yeah, but for an entire weekend, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I would probably still have fun at a Milson West game doing that. But like, I would want to play, and I would want to play still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like for that price, like that's not a lot for forty hours of work. Like I almost think it would be better to like have your own gun cams, helmet cams, right, and then give that to the team that you're trying to like work for and then at the end of the event they just send you all the footage and you just like kind of like edit together just some yeah. badass yeah. video for them you know what i mean um i think that'd be pretty cool but i don't know if i'd ever hire anybody to like yeah follow well, us around we're gonna try that at benghazi because i'm just gonna be passing out contours to everybody on G. oh G. yeah there you go yeah. mine's 4k so yeah <laughs> huge file sizes kind of yeah fun. right uh, have you ever encountered any unique or unexpected challenges while photographing airsoft events or players? How um, did you adapt to those situations? When Chat. it got when it got really dark, I fucking love this. Um, and I did, was not prepared for dark, um, because I, I I haven't really been into like low light photography. Yeah. Since I think that was in the last like three years. So like when I when it got dark, I was like, I don't really know what to do here. So I think that that spurred this kind of thing. Yeah. Where I'm actually shooting through night vision. Um, I think I did that at the last Red Storm. That's a challenge. Yeah. I tried that sure for is. a Benghazi game that we did, and it was infuriating and frustrating all yeah. at the same time. And that was my first time, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it was all the photos were awful greenery and not good. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the same thing that yeah. happened to me. Yeah. And now I know what to do, but it's like it's it was a. It's when still was, a struggle. When was the last red storm? That was like 2018. Ooh, well, they did no they idea. they did the last red storm like three times. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 The last last red storm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was 2018. And that was the first time I had dropped a uh, I actually had this. Yeah, yeah. First time I did this. Um I don't can the camera see this? this yeah, yeah, okay. I think yeah. Um what what tube is it? This one is a way better tube than I had back then. <laughs> I was gonna say I remember seeing yeah. those red storm photos. Yeah, there was like a com spec seven. like yeah. Omni four. <laughs> are these are they whites or greens? This is white, yeah. Um, so n- I don't know anything about cameras or anything like that. But but are you fighting the resolution of the tube itself? Because mm-hmm. I imagine the camera is much higher resolution. Yeah. So that. actually, um, and this is why I like this setup is perfect. I think it's perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of people are putting this onto a larger lens, 
and they're fighting like the larger lens into a smaller lens. Yeah, that's what I did. <clears throat> so this is actually, this lens is smaller than this. And oddly enough, a lot of people are shooting through their phone cameras and it actually looks really, really good. Yeah. Um, so the smaller the lens, actually the better. And that's why all those um, night vision recorders are all like these tiny little dot lenses yeah. right in front of your, and they come out great. So um, that's what you're really fighting is like, as much as we love to have our as photographers, these big lenses, smaller lenses actually are better for night vision through, through night vision. Sure. Somehow I'm not really surprised with that. So one of the most neat things that I found online for actually filming through night vision, we used for the night ambush video we recorded Yeah. a simple phone to PVS 14 adapter. So yep, would, I remember this would screw into the rear eyepiece on your PVS 14 or your duals. And then you just line your phone up with mm -hmm. it and it gets it on the, yeah. the rear eyepiece. That video came out pretty good, dude. Yeah, but it still suffers from the like the black around the video. So like you'd have to zoom in on the video. And I learned that now. But that was something that we had talked about. If you use step up rings instead of step down rings on your camera to use a smaller lens, you can get it rid of the black circle. Yeah, so that, that smaller lens in your camera gets rid. It, it's focused yeah, in so on a smaller what's point. What's awesome that, about yeah. this lens in particular is this actually is 46 millimeters. Yeah. So it goes right into the adapter. So like so fancy. Yeah. I'm really I I, <laughs> I when I finally figured this out and it took years, um and now I'm like getting okay photos. Yeah. Like I'm still not getting like what I want, but um Yeah, like when we tried the same kind of Sorry. technique for a Benghazi game, I was using a fifty eight millimeter lens with a step down ring, then the adapter, and it was like blurry, out of focus, too much ISO yep. on top of the fact that it was a giant black blob around the actual yep. photo. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you try and zoom in, and now you're seeing the grain on the inside yeah. of the physical tube. Yeah, yeah it's And awful. I'm like, all of this footage sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any advice for any aspiring airsoft photographers who want to capture the excitement and essence of don't, the sport? Don't expect to get paid. Yeah. Um, just do it like, just do it to get, you know, exposure. Um, don't expect not to get shot because <laughs> you're going to get shot, you're gonna a get lot. shot like a lot. Always put filters in front of your lenses. Um, because even if you have like this crappy kit lens that you're going out with, uh, that's still like $400 that gets shot out. That's still bad. So always protect your lenses. And if you have a flip screen, like flip that screen in so it doesn't get shot out by from like a random ricochet because you don't want that i've had that happen yep um and have fun like and talk to the talk to the players that you're you're photographing because uh they really appreciate you being there because most of the time they're going to get like crappy cell phone pics in the parking lot yep yep nice words of wisdom to all those aspiring airsoft photographers. Chat GPT is asking yo, very hard you know, hitting you know, questions. Yo, you, know, you know, airsoft photography and and action photography in general has really yeah. prepared me a lot for like wedding photography. Yeah. Because there's so much that's going on and you have to prepare for when it comes to like trying to get cool photos that you like, if you're just shooting a wedding, like, yeah, there's some like stage stuff, but you're really, you're going to be on your feet all day. You're going to be walking like everywhere. Um, and that's wedding photography. And, and you better be there for those pivotal moments. Yeah, you, you know, have like, to be, or you uh, get sued. <laughs> yeah. yeah like. <laughs> also, it's totally okay to use kit lenses. <laughs> yes, it's yeah, fine. Like, I, cause I see so many people, they come up to me asking about it on the weekend and they're like, Oh, what, should I buy really expensive lenses and really expensive cameras? I'm like, I started with the $500 eBay kit. Like, yeah, start with that. Yeah. Move up. Then invest in lenses. Jordan, you're still starting. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, the thing. That's like, the goddamn professional. But at the same time, it's like <laughs> there's so much. Because there is. You can there is. you yeah. can fall down the rabbit hole really quickly. Like the lenses get super expensive super quickly. And at the same time, you can ball out and buy that thousand dollar camera. But if you're still learning, just start on the five hundred dollar eBay camera. Or your cell phone cameras, because those or are nuts right now. Some of them are insane. Yeah. yeah. My mm -hmm. cell phone does like 104 megapixel photos. I mean, it's just wild. Jesus. <laughs> I remember when they first were coming out with those cameras where it was iPhone first announced the dual uh, camera lens. Everybody's like, this is not going to work. There's no way that this is going to improve the f photo quality at all. And then, then they made the triple one, and then everybody yeah. started freaking out. It's like, how does this work? And then that was 
now to me, whenever I see a camera, whenever I'm asking for a phone on the field, it's like, do you have a good camera? It's like, what does that mean? Do you have triple lenses? Like, yes. All right. We're taking photos with that. Well, it's like, <laughs> I have the galaxy S 22 ultra. It has five lenses on okay. the back. Yeah. And what it's doing with all of that is it takes a photo with each one and mashes it all together in like a three by two aspect ratio at 104 megapixels. It, yeah, it's I'd, crazy how I'd that science is. <laughs> It comes so it's far. So it's alien technology. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Are there any specific trends or developments in airsoft photography that you find interesting or exciting? I mean, this can be outside of airsoft photography as well. So, so is there any is, is there any groundbreaking photography stuff going on right now? Um, like in terms of application or, or <clears throat> groundbreaking? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, I have an opinion on that. What's your opinion? On Topaz. That? Oh, okay. Well, yes. Uh, software wise, yes. Okay. What is Topaz? So, so Topaz is a is a company that makes a suite of different AI kind of applications. So, like you can gigapixel Topaz gigapixel AI takes like your kind of crappy cell phone pic and turns it into like a forty five megapixel like huge blown up, and it, you lose like a little bit of 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 um, of like quality. It's it's wild. Um, back before that, like they, they used to use this thing called a, oh man, tessellation. It was like a, it was like something really, really old. Um, but they have a whole bunch of other things like, and I'll use this in my like regular setting too, where if I take a group photo and I find that someone's a little bit farther back and they're out of focus, yeah, brings it back, sharpens it. It's like magic. It's a alien. wild. It's alien. Um, they also have this for video too. Um, they, uh, I think you were, we were talking about, yeah, that. we were talking about that. Um, they have. So they have blur, they have, um, they have gigapixel, um, noise. So for like low light stuff, you get a lot of noise cause like that's what happens. Um, and then it just kind of gets, it's magic. Yeah. Um, so they, they come up with like a whole suite of, of specifically geared towards the photographers who are just shooting a little bit. Um, you know, maybe you missed that shot, but it can bring it back. So for people like me who are just like, ah, I can just like put it through this software. And yeah, it's it pretty, like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's called Topaz? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So they have yeah. one for just like put everybody out there. I have the denoise one. So like for the night game photos, because they come out really grainy. And much like if you're using your night vision, you start to see the noise and your nods. Yeah. Same thing applies to cameras. So you run it through that and all of a sudden it just comes out looking pretty much perfect yeah and it's an ai tool yeah so you don't have to do anything just load the photo in and you can adjust the settings here and there but it fixes your photos yeah it's oh, scary, wow. it's freaking scary out. that an ai generated question yeah. brought up an ai, brought up an AI yeah. generated. <laughs> they're learning skynet yeah right oh yeah skynet 2020 oh yeah oh oh my god oh my god and then here's the next question oh, ai overlords <laughs> <clears throat> How do you approach post-processing and editing of your airsoft <laughs> photographs? Do you have any favorite editing techniques or software? So I've been um, I've been building kind of a look yeah. for like a long time. Yeah. So that I, like when I look at a photo, I'm like, oh, I took that. Yeah. Um. So I like I based it like way back in the day. You guys remember Vesco? Vesco yes. Cam. So they came out with a whole slew of like plugins, and they had like this uh, Vesco 800. It was like a film grainy ish like kind of old uh, film camera um, colors. Yeah. And so I started using that and then I modified it to something of my own and that was like 2015. And then I've just kind of been building on that and like probably like two years ago, I changed that a little bit. So I've had the same plugin though. Like, so I will just literally dump. I mean, I shot a wedding like last weekend and I had like 7,500 photos from that. Ugh. And I just dumped, I, and I went through and and I'll call them, which means like picking out the ones that you want. Yeah. Um, so I got like 900 photos out of like those that I really wanted. And then I'll dump this plugin on it and then I'll go in every single photo. Then I'll just adjust. Um, Ugh, so for you, 900 photos. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. You took 7,500 photos and then you sifted through each one of those. Yep. I mean, how long does that take? How long? Jeez, I have a good way of doing it, so it takes about an hour and a half now. But okay. when I first started, oh, <laughs> picture so number it was, one, it was like, Man, it's all right. It was, yeah, I didn't, yeah, it was, it was all. I mean, that I shot my first wedding 10 years ago, yeah. and I've learned lots from that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you mentioned you had a style, how, how does that work? Um, so it depends on like, uh, what people look for in their, uh, in their what they want in a photo. 
Um, and I'm looking more, I, I, my photos look more kind of like vibrant, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, there's like a lot of, some people like to take the greens away and like, but I like, I, you you're, like color. I like color. I re, like, if you ever like look at what I wear at Airsoft now, yeah. like I just, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, we all know camo doesn't work unless like you're literally standing still. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'll wear a splatter or whatever. Um, so my, my photos are like that too. So I, I have a very kind of like old school filmy with like a lot of vibrant colors. Now are you using Lightroom still? Yeah. Okay. So you have like a preset made in mm -hmm. Lightroom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm kind of I do the same thing. Topaz Lightroom preset filters. I have like ten made just for the field that I know if it's this kind of photo, put this one on. Mm -hmm. But same process because I take I think on average about four to five hundred photos every day I wrap, and then from yeah. there I cut out about fifty percent. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the last wedding was one of the, we get. I, I gauged it about fourteen percent of those photos actually made it out. Yeah, that's oh. crazy. I mean, I guess that's why they pay you, right? That's why yeah. photographers aren't cheap. Oh, have you ever encountered any ethical or legal considerations as an airsoft photographer? How do you navigate those situations? Um, especially airsoft, because like people will be taking off their their eye pro and like yeah, you stick right. that back on. <laughs> you stick that back on, Mister. Yeah, that's becoming like dad. Um, mostly like mostly like that kind of stuff, where like people like doing stupid stuff, and you're yeah. just like, don't do that. Like, why? Like, we're all trying to have fun here. Um, so, and as a photographer, you're, you have free reign. You're just like walking yeah. around. Yeah. So you just, you encounter these things and you're just like, don't do that. <laughs> don't ruin it for have us. Have you ever else. run into anyone like intentionally shooting at you because they thought it'd be funny? Uh, no, I have not, I, but I probably, there's probably been yeah, tons probably of times, been yeah. but I've never run into that. <laughs> yeah, follow up question. It just slipped my mind. So I, I got something. Um, so there, I've started to notice that there's a trend of people that, at least from what I've seen, people think it's funny to take their airsoft stuff in public areas. Ooh. Really? Take photos. Yep. Uh, I've, I've met. And, uh, that's like the, and the public <laughs> place too. That, like there was one guy that was taking uh, a photo because, oh, there was public pool right outside of his apartment. He said, oh, I've been waiting all day to make this happen. And I remember asking him, like, why would you do that? Like, yeah, like why? Why would you put why? us in that position? Yeah, no. That's like Halloween. You know, every Halloween yeah. I have, mm -hmm. we have to put out like a disclaimer. Well, like, hey, you yeah. should. It's you Don't. know, unfortunately, these people are out there, and it's like, oh, but I do it for the clout. It's like there was one guy in New York City that went on top of a skyscraper, and he mm -hmm. and, and having the cops called on him, almost got shot. Apartment building. Apartment yeah. building. Yeah, was he like? Yeah, now he's like doing like airsoft training up there. Uh, well, yeah, he was just taking photos. Oh, really? Jeez. Full kit. He had a GBLS. Taking yeah. photos on the rooftop and then NYPD SWAT just coming yeah. out of nowhere. It was like helicopters and stuff yeah. involved. Man. Kid and played at our field action. <laughs> yeah, oh, did. Did he? Yeah. oh, wonderful. Yeah. But it's it's going to go to the fact, don't take pictures of your airsoft steer, uh, gear in places where it shouldn't. Yeah. Don't put it in public. Make sure it's in a controlled environment because you don't know. All it takes is a phone call. All it takes is a witness. And after that, it's either you get shot or you get put into a patrol car. It's... It's, it, it's sad, you know. It, it's pretty simple, right? It's so simple. <clears throat> you just treat these things like real guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. If you wouldn't do it with a real gun, you shouldn't do it. Right. Yeah, no. I mean, they look real. So <laughs> to anyone else, that's a real gun. Oh, yeah. Also, that's like something. Um, Smig, were you working in the shop that day? We had the kid come in that was asking like the most over-the-line questions where I told him he can leave the shop now. So kid comes in and he goes. Uh, yeah, remind me. It was it. like first day renting playing at the field it was like cool like really friendly to new players and he starts asking questions about guns on the wall and he starts asking stuff like do you think i'd get shot if i yeah i do remember yeah. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. and i'm like <laughs> yes and he goes but why it's a toy gun and i'm like okay and he goes so like taking the orange tip off like it, it looks really real and i'm like yes it does and he was like yeah but it's still a toy gun so like a cop shouldn't shoot me and I'm like, nope, not how that works. No, nope. how that works. It, and it's there was another kid that was like, well, f I was putting my airsoft stuff on Facebook Marketplace, and it keeps getting taken down. Yes, because it's Facebook, and they have a yeah, they have, they have a policy. policy. It's, a, it's the same with Instagram. I've had people come and tag me, and I've had to tell them like, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Please don't tag me because Instagram is waiting to nuke my account at any given moment. Yeah, and uh, 
you know, I, I've had to tell them some of these people, my friends, like, listen, I want to help you sell it, but I can't do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah but Zulu gets shadow banned every other week. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. I usually get Instagram to let that one go by, like, filing a report and they go, what's wrong with your account? I go, it's shadow banned again. Can you stop doing that? Yeah. And then it's it, unbanned. And they're like, what are you talking? We don't shadow ban yeah. people. <laughs> You know, yeah, like, yeah. while pressing the saddle button. Yeah, right. with, that, with that kid after like the third time of him asking like well like what if i just took it out and walked around my neighborhood i was like look mm, this don't might not do be that, the right thing for you i'm not going to sell you anything so you can just leave yeah it. no yeah yeah you don't want to you don't want that coming back no like, like from a store perspective but also a field perspective yeah no because seriously. i remember a lot of stupid stuff has happened in the past and then it starts getting funneled back to whatever field you play at yeah. and it's like mm-hmm. you don't want that bad rep it it all comes back it all comes sure back. does yeah. All right, so let's let's get off this depressing topic. Again. Yeah. But, so uh, last question is kind of dumb. I just read through <laughs> it. So I'm just going to say this. Like, uh, if you had unlimited amounts of funds, right, um, what would you do in terms of, like, airsoft documentary type stuff? Like, like, what would you do if you just had unlimited funds and somebody was like, hey, I got an event and I want you to do it? Um, I would probably go to that event. <laughs> you heard it here first. Head call group goes through it. Um, but I it. like I've been uh, I've been wanting to like get like a like get a one of those like old Pennsylvania barns. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those like old yeah. Pennsylvania yeah. barns. I don't yeah. want to make it into like a studio. That'd be really cool. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, like it doesn't take much to just come out, other than the, the time that Ted, to drive. Ted, unlimited funds. You're supposed yeah, to, I know. You're supposed to say, <laughs> I'd buy an F-16, put a GoPro on the bottom, and do flybys. I mean, I would, I would, maybe I'd shoot medium format at <laughs> these things, but I mean, that's a that's a weird rabbit hole. You're, you're thinking like a dad. You're all like responsible. I know, it's like, awful. First, I'd start a 401k for my yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Uh, I would, yeah. You wouldn't want to do something like use a red camera for like... Maybe. That's just a lot. That's just a lot. I mean... Yeah. So red maybe like a like the super slow mo like you can do 10, 10 20 thousand frames. Or oh, yeah. slow mo oh, guy cameras. Yeah, 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 yeah like, like from a from a nerd perspective, my recent thing that I've been trying to do at the field is capture the BB gun on the barrel. So I'm gonna get it one like, day. Oh one no, day. Like, I've got I got two yesterday. Oh, so shooting at like one four thousandth shutter speed, and trying to get the BB coming out of the barrel, but doing like a whole video of just super slow-mo. I mean, these these cameras and like the A7S, they're, they're the 240 frames per second, 1080p. Oh, for video, for yeah. Video, yeah. I've been trying to do it with photos. Oh, okay. But well, that's I'd... why I'm saying for like a RED camera, yeah. get back into the video work. The thing with the RED cameras though is that you just buy the RED camera and then you have to buy the crazy lens. all the things yeah. and then it just becomes like 40 pounds. Yeah. And I just don't want to... Now that I'm it a old, sense, an yeah. older person who's a dad... <laughs> I'm trying. Um... <laughs> Don't want to be carrying that. I remember I've tested my Ronin before a wedding at your field. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I brought that. Like I drove two hours just to test it because I was shooting a wedding the next day. Right on. And I was like, I don't know how to use this. I need to, I need to go <laughs> do a real it. quick run down your uh, CQB. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So real quick, we're going to take a little quick break and we will be back. All right. We're back from our break. Uh, <laughs> So this will be the disclaimer for everyone else. Uh, from from this point forward, for the most part, <laughs> it's going to be me and uh, Smiggy, 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 Smiggy Balls sitting here looking like idiots while the two camera nerds uh, nerd out over their camera stuff. So uh, I'll uh-huh. kick it off with this question that AI put forth, and I was like, this is going to be the, the Pandora's box right oh, here. Boy. What kind of equipment do you typically use for airsoft for t- uh, photography? Are there any specific lenses, cameras, or accessories that you find essential for capturing the action. I can see why you thought that was Pandora's. <laughs> so um, uh, I always use dual bodies. So I always have two cameras on me. Um, one's long, one's short. Um, usually I'm shooting 24 millimeter for short so I can get up and close and personal. And then for long, depending on what camera I'm using, 150 to uh, 200 millimeters or so. Me and Smiggy are dual bodies as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, uh, oddly enough, I, I usually use prime lenses because I don't like zooming and I hate, I hate it. So I'll zoom with my feet and uh, I can do really shallow depth of field. So, um, so you get that nice background separation. Is that like, uh, oh, what's that mode on the iPhone? Uh, portrait portrait mode? mode. Yes. That, Absolutely. That is so cool. Yeah. So you, you you automatically get portrait mode out of most, most prime lenses. 
good for you. Yeah. But you sacrifice the ability to have a zoom. Yes. Because I use, like when I'm on the field, I have two with me. One's a prime lens and one's a zoom lens because depending on either the game mode we're playing or the type of photos I want to take that game, I'll put one or the other on because I don't have a second camera I can use at this moment that uses the same kind of lenses at least because I try to stick to Sony's. Yeah. So Jordan, why don't, why don't you get in a, you just had a conversion done to your yes. camera and it it's, it's so misleading, right? So, so for the night games, <laughs> he's taking pictures uh, and some of which I was playing and it's pitch black. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the pictures and you're like, that's Sunday at noon. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. So well, Ted actually is the one that helped me with this because I was like, I'm thinking about doing this thing. Have you ever tried it? And he immediately goes, Oh, I just did that. Here's a shopping list. And so for everyone, it's called full spectrum. I'm assuming you can explain it a little better than I can. Uh, they just remove. So most cameras now, um, actually all cameras, unless they're specifically built um, for full spectrum, they have filters the that IR filter out. Filter. Yeah. Um, filter out light like IR that usually um, you would not want to have in your photos. Um, usually, uh, it will ruin a lot of things. Yes. Um, but the cool thing about it is that you can get all the cool night things. So all those, all that money that we dump into our night vision mm -hmm. to get the cool pointers, you can see those, yep. those things. Um, it's like kind of, if you take your cell phone and you look at like, like a security, camera. like a security camera, you see that like purple, yeah. that's like that IR um, light coming out. Yeah. Cause I've noticed like a lot of cell phone cameras and even some of the older contours can pick up infrared light. Mm -hmm. But a lot of DSLRs, because you can't see infrared light with your naked eye, the camera doesn't either just because you want your photo to be as realistic as it can be. Now, for taking photos at night, removing that IR filter will make it, like Dave said, where all of a sudden it looks like it's daytime, even though it's 10 o'clock at yeah. night. It also helps that, like, especially this camera that you're that, that's sitting here, um, I'm guessing that's the A7S II. Yes. Um, these cameras were purpose-built to be lower megapixel um, higher ISO. So meaning it's lower megapixel and the, the actual filter, um, is sorry, the actual sensor is built so that it can gather as, as much light as possible on, on larger, um, a, a larger individual pixels, individual pixels so that you can actually get like, you can shoot like 104,000 ISO on this. I think mine goes up to 200. Yeah. So it's like, or like 400,000. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. Like it's like having color night vision. Yeah. Like I remember watching a video like four or five years ago and this guy was like color night vision for airsoft. And you've probably seen it on YouTube. And I was like, what is this? And it was like this guy with this a seven, just like out there, just cranking his ISO up. Um, and then I was like, this is magic. It, it is. Yeah. Because it lets you, and especially when you're shooting like the night vision games with the tracers, you can actually get the tracers on film, on, on video and photos because of it's magic. Like it really boils down yeah. to it's camera black magic. Mm -hmm. But there are other cameras that have tried that, which is why I brought the psionics over. Yeah. With the, with the shot out lens, I see. Well, so that, <laughs> that actually happened at Milson West. Uh, the GTI MSW game, the frag in the hallway that went off right in my face. Yeah. Just the concussive wave of the, the tag round blew out the glass. Nice. Because right? oh, my nice. contour and the psionics were running at the same time. And you could see on my contour the glass shards coming off my helmet. Oh, wow. wow. But it was an airburst. I remember yeah, seeing it. It was an airburst. We were like right holding room. security on the corner and I hear the spoon pop of a of a tag grenade and I'm like, frag. And as soon as I said that, it comes around the corner because he was cooking it and it goes off like right here midair. Yeah blows the glass out of the uh the psionics but this is an interesting idea because it's another company trying to make a pocket handheld version of what the a7 does mm -hmm. and it does it okay it job. does it okay yeah. i was in one of the this is one of the very first psionics cameras because i was in the original test run they sent me this camera and it was kind of weird because at the time they were saying don't use it like a monocular because that was what everybody thought at the time like you could use it like a pvs 14. Mm -hmm. it is very much pvs 14 at home <laughs> However, they've changed their marketing strategy and now they are marketing it as a digital night vision monocular. I'm not a big fan of it. I haven't seen the newer ones. They did make some design changes off of what I like fed in their direction. Yeah. But it does the same thing. It can do photos day, night. And so now like that, I guess you'd consider that like digital night vision at is. that point, right? So is there a refresh, a refresh rate? There like, is. like, yeah. Is so that was like one of the big delay? problems with yeah. the original psionics is that the refresh rate was rather low. So when you were filming with it or the dudes that were wearing it as a monocular, they were saying there was a slight lag time. Yeah. Even shout out to the Canada that. dudes coming down with those things. Yeah. That's the thing. There are a lot of people because this is not ITAR restricted. You can bring this outside of the United oh, yeah, States. No shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can buy it outside. 
but be wearing it as a monocular because there are people that have these set up as duals. Yep. Um, there would be a slight lag time, and even though it was like oh, a millisecond God. or it's yeah, enough. No, it's enough. I saw it's some enough. people at Msato with the dual with dual uh, psionics, and I was like, "Oh, vomit! Uh, yeah, the no. vomit inducing." I'd be like, "Whoa!" It's like playing a a video game at twelve FPS or something. It's weird though, but also it doesn't suffer from anything that a normal night vision monocular would suffer from because it is a camera. So it doesn't bloom or anything. Yeah, it blooms for a second and then it adjusts around it. Oh yeah. And okay. then on top of that, it does see in color. So like some of the footage we have of using it at Camp Shelby, you can see all the colors at night. And that's something I realized last night with the A7 shooting with it for the first time out that it's converted. I can see your armband colors. So like as oh, I'm wow. refing walking around the field and Jojo who's wearing his PBS 14 is like, we're playing sham wow what that, what color are you right. and i'm like hey, jojo he's on blue team yeah. how can you tell i'm like dude look the camera still sees blue and red yeah mm -hmm. so it, it's very interesting and that's why the photos are going to be really fucking cool yeah but the whole night vision photography thing is just wild once you start yeah i mean you, if you really wanted to get into it and you you're interested in doing it this is probably the easiest way to get into it it's like what 500 dollars. i think the newer ones yeah the yeah. like the sport line psionics <clears> are like yeah bucks. but i mean like if you this is like exponentially better but you're also paying about two to get in there yeah yeah and then you have to buy good lenses too so yeah yeah because you need to get an a7 which is about i think we found ours for like 700 bucks on ebay yeah no and then mm -hmm. a lens which lends 900 bucks yep at minimum and to get it converted from kalari was about 300 350 yep. mm -hmm. so you're looking at almost two grand for a full night vision camera setup where the psionics is five to seven hundred depending on the model yeah my problem with this is it's a very small viewfinder and you actually have to manually focus everything. Is there a uh, HDMI out? Could you put nope. it to a screen? Okay. So I tried that yeah, sucks. because it does have a charging. <laughs> yeah, it has one port and it's the charging port. And oh. I was trying to figure out a back alley way to get it to do video out so you could run it from a monitor. Yeah, no, nope. it's not going to work. So you're literally just walking around like this the entire time trying to get it. Sweet. I find that a lot of my photos come out blurry yeah. because it's not like, with other manual focus strap. cameras. Dude, the, ca the strap is dope. I'm so upset we'll that I didn't that. get a strap. But uh, <laughs> a lot of other you manual You got a certificate though, right? I did get it. Okay, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like a, a nice certificate of authenticity with like the stamp on it that like, yeah, leaves the like, mark. Yeah. But with this, um, with other cameras, like when you're doing manual focus, it'll give you like that the box window pop up when you're perfectly focused on the item. This doesn't have that. So like, I'd say at least 50 to 60% of the photos I take with this. Like, Wait, you don't, you don't use... Um, Autofocus? No, no, no. For manual focus, you don't use uh, like a contrast highlight or anything? I do. Okay. But I'm saying, because like I know with my Canon, it does it. I haven't noticed it with this. Like when I oh. go to zoom in on an item for manual focus, it'll actually pop up and say like you're perfect. perfect oh, wow. Focus. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, shit. Um, but yes, no, the Kalari camera strap. This is like the most comfortable strap I've ever gotten. And wow. gave it to me for free with my order. Man, I didn't get one. I didn't get one either, Ted. Should, yeah. should email like, them. Hey. It's got the same kind of rubber material as like the old HSGI sure grip stuff. Wow, that's back in the day when yeah. the Costa was big. I had the Costa leg rig back in the day too. Well, it was funny when it like came in the mail. I'm like, oh, they sent a camera strap. Like, this is kind of cool. And then I felt it. I was like, what? Wait, this is like neoprene and HSGI sure grip rubber. Yeah. And I put it on. I'm like, this is the most that's sweet. camera strap ever. I wish I could get a rifle sling and then it processed. I'm like, I'm pretty sure HSGI still does this. Well, if you know, let me know if you want rifle sling stuff because that's, that's all I use on my cameras. I, you know, I thought about it and I was like, that's that's kind of like somebody's gonna tell me I'm cringe for doing this because I was literally gonna take an LBX sling and put it on this camera. Have you seen any of my wedding selfies? I have dual splatter rifle sling. Nice, camera. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you ever have anybody at the wedding just be like, "Hey, what is that?" Or, or maybe they no, know what you know it what? is. They, no one, and you know what? Even when I do weddings, I always have my my cameras taped too, so people don't come up to be like, "Yeah, I was shooting my Canon the other day," and I was like, oh, "I don't want to." Oh, you get that? Oh, you get all the time. Yeah, yeah. I got I I, I got one of these zip zip. zip you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm a photographer too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like, <laughs> that's great. Just, I, I've got a disposable camera. I'm <laughs> yeah, a right. disposable camera enthusiast. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 a thing that I don't want to talk to people about. I just want to do my job. Yeah. So it's yeah. I, so I tape over like the Sony or the or the Olympus or Rome system on it. <laughs> Anybody can yeah, take that's pictures. Really but, funny. Only some people can be photographers. You know. What I mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> you tape over the brand on the lens too. Um, sometimes if I'm not lazy. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I've never had that instance. So like, that's kind of funny thinking about it, but also to be fair, most of the time people come up to the field talking about cameras. I'm like ready to nerd out and let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's not I would love to nerd out at a wedding, but then I'm like, crap, I'm here to work. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, I do. And you're like, shit. <laughs> yeah. But like yeah. I just missed the most important shot yeah. of the night. You may kiss. That's why the bride. I, I always have two shooters. Cause I, I'm like, one of us, one wants to get it. <laughs> so now, like, like specifically with weddings, right? Obviously, you go to the church probably before anybody, right? Do you, do you like set up like, okay, we're going to. I'm going to put a, a tripod over here. and we're, this For is the, video, yes. Yeah. And you always have to talk to the priest to see what, like, because I've shot in a, what was a Greek Orthodox, okay. and you weren't allowed to pass a certain pew. So I was like, where do I go? So I was like, upstairs. And I was like, this is where I'm going, I guess. Um, Zoom lens, baby. Yeah. So like, uh, depending on on where you're going, like, but the last wedding I was at was, um, was at like a, a uh, it's like a ski resort. So there was, oh, right. Sounds yeah, dope. yeah, it was free, free rain. So I was like, this is sweet. Nice. But yeah, no, you, sometimes it takes a little bit of pre-planning. Like scouting. Yeah. Now with the, the wedding photography, have you ever hit a moment where you're like, I totally fucked up this section of the wedding? Um, <laughs> yes. So, so it, it happened once, but then it, then it corrected itself. So, um, I was shooting a wedding. Actually, you guys know the guy. Oh. Uh, Dan ha- Daniel Hazelhurst from Oh okay I shot um, uh, did his wedding video <coughs> from uh Sa- Sanj, Sanj, Sanj Oh yeah yes HPA HPA yeah. yes yeah so um I lost one of my uh, cards oh. from his wedding oh, I've done that in no. the seats and I was <laughs> oh, like no. I have lost from here to here and I don't know where that footage went I have audio. Because yeah. I like I always have like a uh, um, a back recorder. backup audio yeah. recorder, yeah. But I don't have video, so like, what do I do? And I was freaking out. Um, so that is actually kind of a segue into I always have smaller cards. Interesting. Yeah, because what size do you consider? So well, now that I shoot like that A seven R four shoots sixty four megapixels. Yeah, that's why I'm. So like, my small cards are like one twenty eight now. Okay. But like back in the day, my small cards are like sixteen to thirty two because if I lose that card, I only you lose yeah you this lose much yeah all so much. Yeah. But now that most bodies have dual card slots, that's the but one still. thing I I wish I'd bought in the A seven S because I still only have yeah. a single camera. But yes, no that that was the uh, that was like a uh, my second shooter and I were like, fuck, we don't know where this like hour went. <laughs> so how'd you end up finding it? You just retreat. We were just like freaked out and we were like looking through our cars and we were like looking through the seats and I was like, oh, yes, found it. And then you put it in it's like airsoft footage. You're like, no. Oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been. <laughs> airsoft and, uh, taped and over oddly the enough, now I have like, since I've upgraded a lot of my cards now, like I have random cards in my car and in my, in my wife's car, because if I get someplace and I've completely forgotten my cards, oh, I have like you have two or backup three card. backups nice. and they're like not great cards, but they're cards. It'll, it'll yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. I literally had an instance with that last weekend. Um, Dave was like, let's put the drone up and get some footage for AMS. I'm like, yeah, great. And I went and opened up my camera box, my SD card holder, not there. I left it at home and I'm like, oof running around the shop looking because i'm like i always have an extra micro sd card somewhere in here mm-hmm. just in case still couldn't find it i was like ronnie you're going to walgreens <laughs> <laughs> i was like here's a 50 go get me the biggest micro sd card they have right <laughs> have you done any drone stuff i have yeah it's uh it's definitely a wild ride getting into it because there's yeah. so many restrictions yeah um, do you guys yes. have any problems with azulu because of the airport next yes time? okay yeah yeah so it's a it's definitely like Opening up that app, like, am I allowed to take off here? Okay, okay. Yeah. What's my ceiling? Okay, I can do this stuff. But yeah, no, it's it's really, you can get a lot of really cool content that you would have never gotten. Yes. Before. And I like, and like some of the stuff, like, um, like I did a, a railroad festival last September, and um, I took my one wheel there, and I was just on my one wheel on my gimbal, and I was just like zooming around the, the festival on my one wheel with my gimbal. That sounds awesome. Yeah, and my friend was like, "Why didn't you just do that with a drone?" I was like, "That's because my drone is not going to be flying like right here, high level." Yeah. <laughs> and if I do that, that is so many violations. <laughs> so it's like, so like you kind of. I've noticed that like the drone isn't what you can shoot everything on much like with a DSLR. You can't shoot everything on that. But yeah. If you mix the two together, you can make a cool ass video. Yeah. 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 You, there's a, it, it, and it, they're really easy to fly compared to, yes. well, you don't really fly them. That's, a, that's yeah. the thing I noticed about them is, um, we just bought a Mavic, Mavic something. Pro. Oh, nice. Something. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Super nice. Right. I have the old one. <laughs> well, like, like, uh, I can't remember who was asking me about it, but I was, I was messing around with it, you know, just flying around. 
And uh, they were like, uh, is it hard to fly? And I was like, no, you're not flying it. Yeah. You're just telling it where to go. Mm -hmm. It flies itself. Yeah. Uh, you're just saying, hey, man, go over here if you don't yeah. mind. It's All it is is like just video game control. It's just plotting it, in coordinates, right? It's like well, that sort of. It's like that Call of Duty where you're just like on rails and you're just like, yeah. I just want to shoot here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go that way, and I'm gonna yeah. look this way. Yeah, I mean, there's some cool stuff you could do with it, mm -hmm. messing around. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I've already figured out like you get a little bit of creative freedom with it in the aspect of if you learn how to control the elevation and rotation while you're moving it. Mm -hmm. I've already figured out how to do like a very nice panning 360 shot yeah, yeah. around something, which makes for a cool video. But at the same time, it's just remembering to push the joysticks in the opposite yeah. direction. So yeah, it yeah. rotates while it turns. And I'm lazy and I'll just be like, uh, point of interest. Yeah, yeah. Go. Put, put it on the touch. And then I'll just be like, e that looks good. <laughs> 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 I actually ran it into, uh, so I was doing like oh, a- God, I do remember this. <laughs> I was doing I like, do. a, nice. like, uh, like a fast sweep through the parking lot low, right, yeah. with all the cars <laughs> going by. And then I was gonna pull out, rotate back and get the wide, shot that's in my head because i was like this will be neat. that's a great idea well it's harder said than <laughs> well we have power lines there right oh and they're they're not low hanging but they're not very high either yeah, yeah, and yeah. also from the, and i'm using the drone we have the, the we controller have the with screen. the lcd screen so, yeah. I'm, so i'm using that because my brain works better that way probably video games have something to do with that and um so i'm i'm pulling out and i'm getting ready to start rotating back and like the drones six inches and then i see the power like it they were invisible <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden it was like oh <laughs> so the last thing the last thing i saw in the screen was the power line and it i i heard it hit and i was like oh, oh and i'm thinking did it get electrocuted like and i look at the screen and it's just it's frozen and i was like Oh, it's on the ground over there somewhere. Like, like all I had was like the last picture. Of, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's last life, you know. Oh like, no! So all I see is Dave just start running from the red, <laughs> running down, <laughs> yeah. like literally chasing it. I mean, this is like a this, this drone was like twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and like God, two we just got it. Yeah. <laughs> just got it. And uh, uh, and I think I was like Jordan, be careful of the power lines. Like, <laughs> like, like I was the guy saying it. Right? And uh, so then as I started like like walking towards it. I noticed on the screen it moved a little bit. I was like, wait a minute. That's, I thought it was just a frozen picture. No, it, it self-corrected and was just hovering. And it was hovering so still yeah. that it looked like it just had frozen the picture. And yep. then, so I started to fly it. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby. <laughs> That's I, don't, awesome. I don't even think I told Jordan till like uh, like a week ago. He's like, "Oh man, I yeah, think I think I I think I broke one of the <laughs> the propellers." I was like, "Nah, it was me. I ran." I have I have the old old one, yeah. and mine would definitely have just gone right into those power lines because well, it doesn't have any sensors on this. Well, side. so that's the well, thing. this one does. I just it didn't does, see it. But the uh, the power lines don't set off. Oh, because they're so correct. Mm. Too, yeah, they're yeah. Too, I mean, it's really I. It will not crash, and even if you're trying to land it somewhere else that's not home. It, it'll come down and then it'll just like hover. Yeah. It's like, do you really want to go here? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I'm not going to do anything. Stop yeah. And then like continue yeah. to pull down on oh, the elevation. Yeah. I'm such a nerd. I bought one of those, those orange helipads. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> so I noticed that with the, Why uh, not? the like, if you're trying to take off and it's on grass, it won't. So one of those pads might actually work. Yeah. I bought it for like mowing the lawn tall grass. Taking off. Yeah. But I just wanted a cool helipad. Was, yeah, of course. Yeah, it works. Everybody wants to fly on couch. But, but it, 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 it's super cool and it's fun. And, and I don't know how people wear like the. the oh, the FPV game. stuff? Yeah, I would oh. probably get sick. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I need a yeah. trash can next to me at all times. Mm -hmm. And they and they do like insane oh, yeah. turns. You remember the, uh, the FPV video I sent you where the dude was flying his drone through a lava? Like an yeah. explosion? Freaking I don't know if you saw it. that. No, of, like, that's really awesome. Instagram FPV drone pilots. He went to one of the volcanic eruptions in Iceland mm. and through the giant lava field, there's like lava squirting out of holes. Oh, that's places. awesome. Oh, yeah. He's flying his first person drone and all of a sudden one comes up and just goes straight at it. He flies straight through it. Wow. And his drone kept going. Like he had the wow. after photos, like the lava like melted blades and like yeah. holes oh, and yeah. batteries. He's like, it shouldn't have survived. Have you seen the ones where they're mounting like full red cameras on top of them? Yeah, that looks sketchy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> They just like strap them into these huge drones. I was like, that is like fifteen, twenty thousand dollar equipment. They're just barreling. Yeah, so, just like so, a couple zip ties and some duct. Oh, jeez. Oh. So I actually got to see a red camera one time. I'm not like a camera guy. I don't know shit about it, right? But uh, who was it? Who was it? They they filmed. Was this that Star Wars fan? Yes, fan? they filmed a Star Wars. I don't fan. remember who it was, but I know Richie from OES was involved. 
Oh yes. yeah, he's Rich huge. Di- uh, Rich Dyke. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that guy. Uh, but they, they had like, at, like when they were setting it up, he there was like a brief like, hey, I don't care what you break here, whatever. This, this guy right here, you don't touch. Yeah. Like it was like a yeah. big deal. No, like, yeah, oh, I would man, be like, dude. I just look at it and be like, oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't know it. <laughs> Red cameras are so expensive. Yeah, uh, it's a shame, dude. I, I never got to see the the final product of that but man they like they went hard on yeah. it like it looked cool we could do some digging and try and find yeah it. i mean i could also just message richie and ask him where it is oh yeah no shit yeah i mean he's still around yeah he he's in really, new jersey he doesn't really play airsoft anymore but yeah you know, he's probably, he, he moved to la i think and then he came back he has like, two kids i think yeah. he's still doing film stuff or he's doing uh product photography oh good for him yeah really good i mean he still does some video but like his product of photography stuff is awesome. I definitely would give him a follow because he does yeah. all the behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, of like how he shot up the shot and stuff is really, really cool. Well, you've been doing that a lot too. Yeah. Yeah, I tried. You've I got tried. a cool little studio going on. Yeah. Where's that? It's in your basement. It's in my basement. Right? I built it because of uh, I was like my company's completely 100 percent work from home, so I was like, I need to be in a place that I want to be comfortable in. Oh, nice, man. Yeah. Because you're using, I've seen your backdrop stuff, and that amazes me because I'm like really nerding out about product photography lately for the shop. The, are you just using like an LCD screen? 65 inch LCD screen? That's what I thought. I got a Facebook marketplace for like 300 bucks. Wait, wait, wait. So you're, you're putting a TV yeah. behind the product to create mm-hmm. the backdrop. And then yeah. I'm like air, I'm like air playing it from my Mac so I can, and I'm using AI to produce the backdrop. So like I can yeah. be anywhere. It's I, I saw the one you did recently with, it was your helmet and nods and like the parking lot with like a diner in the background. Yeah. 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 That mm-hmm. one looked really cool. And then you like did the, <laughs> behind the scenes part i'm like son of a bitch it's yeah a i was at, i was at a i was at a waffle house i literally put in <laughs> waffle house at night boop 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 good send it <laughs> dude it looks great it's like i'm one of those, uh, those like pop-up light boxes that are like pre-lit and you have the backdrops like already in there yeah just put the product in there take photos comes out great perfect for just doing the shop but like the stuff you're doing I'm yeah like, i wish i had i want to get those light you know those those uh those those lights that go behind the tv yes. and it changes with the fit of the photo hey, how we you have turn, those? turn on. on look the remote's right there right by the uh, the bottle dvs there stupid God, oh yeah prepared. so like Jeez, they, they make those um they they goes around the tv and whatever like color is showing on that corner of the tv it's like that color oh yeah, yeah i've seen those so those i want to take those leds and use them as like product lighting so i get like yeah no but the the ones he's talking about actually like know what the tv colors are and they match so it's like if there's like if there's like an ocean and sand it's like the the leds will have like blue and then like tan oh that's awesome and so i want to take those from the back of the tv and use them as product lighting so i can get like full effect i'm still playing with the idea (laughs) because those things are the actual good ones are expensive so I'm like, I don't know if I want to spend the money just to like play around with this. Just some lights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah. So, so I'm a dumb dumb, right? So, uh, like in my mind, it's like old. Like uh, dad gets a VHS recorder for you know, and every the way everybody waves at the camera, right? But when you looked at a TV, like the refresh rate of the TV would make it like mm, you have lines. Yeah. You run into that with the with your backgrounds. No. What's the difference with that? Because I'm not doing video. Cause I'm just, it's just photos. a picture. It's a photo, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The refresh rate, if I were to do video, I'd probably just, there's <clears throat> all modern cameras now have uh, anti flicker for video oh, built okay. in. So you just, just a setting on it. Oh, so right. just like, yeah, back in the day, yeah, you'd have that refresh rate on, on like, um, CRT screens or like weird refresh rates for like LCDs. But yeah, most modern cameras have a setting that you can just make sure that you don't have that. Cause a lot of what happens is a lot of, um, led lights, mm-hmm. um, and especially in like sports, um, or like gyms, LED lights have like this weird flicker rate. Oh, and yeah. so you have to have that on your camera because if you're taking photo and you're out of that state, then your ca- your photo's dark. Oh, because you're in between flashes? You're in between flashes. Oh, weird. So, yeah, so so most modern cameras, like this one, and I think Sony's have them, they have anti-flickers that they just, they sync with the, the, the Hertz yeah. and then takes it. Does it, it automatically? Yeah. So I actually ran into a little bit of a problem right? with that because I was trying to take photos and videos of the muzzle flashes on the tracer units mm. and that would <clears> kick in Yep, and it would make it so I wouldn't get any of it. Yeah. And I, like, I had to go in and turn anti flicker off. I was like, so if you're doing muzzle flashes and this is a completely like kind of a vouch for this company that I work for, for Ohm system or Olympus, um, we have this thing called pro capture, which takes 30 or 60 frames 
per second versus raw prior and post. prior and post. Yeah. So like you just you hold down on the trigger and then it'll just start. And then when you click the trigger, it'll take 30 or 15 in front of that click and then 15 after. So you never miss a muzzle call. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then you don't have like, like most of the time for like at least my Sony cameras, I'll just stick that on burst and I go, mm, yeah. maybe I got something. <laughs> but then I have like 40 <laughs> photos on there that I yep. probably got nothing. With this one, it'll delete all the rest of them and it'll just have 15 before, 15 after. Oh, cool. Really nice. Yeah, because that's so like the A6500 over there does 20 frames per second burst. That's great. Don't miss any of the things I'm trying to get. The A7S2 only does four frames per yeah. second. And yeah, it's old. that, I miss a lot of the cool yep. stuff during the night mm -hmm. games. I realized right away, I was like, now that's the difference between buying the used camera on eBay for 600 and 1200 if I went to the A7 III. Yeah. But especially when you're doing this with like no budget, that's yeah. uh, that's that's what I run into a lot. I'm like, I don't really have a budget for the stuff I do. I So it's like, I like getting started freelancing. I actually sold my dual tubes oh, yeah. to get all of my equipment because I was like, I don't know where I'm funding any of this from. Yeah. So I like I sold my DTMGs. Plus, I also also started to work for night vision devices. So that kind of eventually helped. you were going to get it, another it helped, anyway. Yeah. What do you run right now for night vision? I'm using um, BNVDs from night vision devices. Oh, right on. Do you want me to go grab? If you want to. Well, do you want to show them off on camera? Sure. Yeah, here we go. Airsoft. Here we go. Here we go. Well, actually, you shoot more real guns than you do airsoft. So it's, it, it's it's funny that like COVID got me into diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> into these, I wear I wear these stupid like hype hype beast hats now. Yeah, man. And then guns. I got so I like I I went from like two guns to like seven. Good for you. And I was just like, um, I don't know what happened. Well, COVID happened. That's what I blame it on. Well, yes, yeah, so these are the BNVD. Um, SGs. Those are nice. Is yeah. that Canvas glass? No, it's all proprietary. Interesting. I was going to say that's the why rear, these are really, really light. The rear diopters look like Canvas glass. Mm -hmm. They're big, though. Uh, I feel like they're big. I feel like the center core on that is just chunkier than a. It looks rear. chunkier. I mean, the rear. Oh, okay. I mean, the actual glass <clears throat> looks weird. Look yeah. Big. I have uh, old school Sentinels, so I'm, I'm working with us. Hey, block. hey, do you know those things work? <laughs> yeah, they do. They take a beating, man. Uh, these are white or green? Oh, white. Of yeah. course they are, because why would yeah. you ever get green in your mind? Well, <laughs> since <laughs> since I, I I'm like kind of repping the company, I kind of have to have good stuff. So like, yeah, you're not gonna show off though. I'm not gonna be like, hey, look at these kind of crappy green tubes. By the way, buy from us. <laughs> 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 now we're gonna show you some crispy tubes. Here you go. So are they gonna? Uh, I know a couple other companies are working on it as well, but are they gonna do a quad? I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. So I turned 40 in August and I've already decided that my midlife crisis is going to be a set quad. of quads. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the, the Nocturne. Oh, the Nocturne. Yeah, the Nocturne yeah, yeah, ones, yeah. Right, for the light housing and plus they articulate. Yeah. Well, also, cool. like but, warranty. Yeah. And they're sure. from like uh, New Hampshire, I think, right? Uh, yeah. They're, they're local-ish. Yeah. Because yeah, local yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, my no. problem with the, the QT NVGs, because you brought it up, it's a China company, no warranty. And I think the, well, the glass is awful. The glass is awful too. Like it's still quads. Is right. that the that's the the black pair that we looked <clears> through at uh, Mills and West? No. So those were Anvis tens. Those no no, no wait yeah no you're right Guardian yeah. Center yeah there was somebody with the QT NVGs. Someone came to the range with QT NVGs okay. at the last rate at the last range. I'm like and he was like walking around and it was like pure daylight. I'm like day not oh quads uh, okay when you have quads you have to flex them. yes yeah <laughs> I mean I, I looked through them and I was like all right but I also like there was a line of people trying to look through them right <laughs> and so I was just like oh, okay like yeah. so I didn't really get a good chance to look through yeah, them. yeah yeah you know they don't have the curved glass they just have like the yeah it was yeah, like, like, a, like a, a hard line. corner yep. mm -hmm. yeah. you know I didn't get a good type but I've decided I'm not a car guy um I live in communist New York so I can't do cool gun stuff so I was like eh, I'll just buy a pair of quads yeah you figure nocturne I mean if you're listening, Nocturne, uh, you know, like I'll, I'll send this to <laughs> like like twelve thousand to fourteen thousand. You know, that's a good range, right? Yeah, that's a good price. Yeah, I mean, just for the housing, you, could, you know. At least with MS tens, you could you could get you could get it around twelve, but then you have no way of you fixing have no them. products. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like that's the same thing. Like if you get a pair of MS tens, they've been discontinued for like fourteen, yeah. fifteen years. You know, now. Yeah. tubes if you can break them. Yeah, fucked. I remember my first dual tubes were Anvis, and um. And I wore them to Red Storm. Um, and everybody's like, don't get them in the rain. I'm like, why? And it's like, 
Because like the whole underside is yeah, completely exposed wire. wires. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, these, right. Oh, yeah, this is for aviation. I get it. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the original problems with like the first generation of Sense and RMVGs because the wires were exposed on the bottom. Yeah. I remember. Mine still are. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He I has one of the very time. original Sense. They make metal things to put up in there. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember Nick got his first pair <clears> of <throat> Sense and like the same day, long enough ago that it came from Night Moth. But, uh, he went to adjust the actual like distance between the tubes and it pulled the wires out. Oh, that was Danny. Yeah. That happened to uh, Mario's son, Danny as well. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing happened. Oh, wow. And so I lucked out when I got mine, they were already perfect. Yeah. I didn't have to adjust. And them you'd have all. to you're like, yeah. I'm not touching these. Yeah. That, Cause everybody, I seen it happen twice and I was like, Oh, no yeah. way. Nope. I, I got a really good price on my, my MVGs, but yeah. Um, so I went with the L3 white glass. And yeah. Yeah. It's good. Crispy. I remember the first time I looked through, uh, so Mario was the first person, that I knew that had, he had Sentinels as well in the white phosphorus. He got them from uh, TV, TNVC. TNVC, yeah. yeah. And uh, he paid a pretty penny for them. And I, I looked through them and I, you know, I was in the military. Green was, that's all we ever had. Yeah. And green was all I ever had before that. And when I looked through his, I was like, what the, this is cheating. Like, yeah. oh my God. Like yeah. the, the, I guess the human eye can detect more, uh, the contrast, more yeah, contrast. Yeah, yeah. And it was almost like, why are we using green? You know, yeah. you can see more shades of green or something, but, um, some people were, don't like white. Uh, I guess people have headaches. Yeah. So people get massive headaches. I, I have heard of that. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've met people that prefer single tubes over duels. I've never heard that, but that interesting. Apparent. So I know this dude who, is motor t and in california and he i would ask him it's like well what do you think about the marine corps moving over to dual tubes i don't like it i've used dual tubes before i died for driving i don't like it oh, oh he's a crazy person yeah, yeah. I that's what drive. i thought i had to drive with seven bravos okay yeah that's like uh i can't tell that <laughs> i can't tell if that's yeah two, two feet or 20 feet in front of me. like i have no freaking idea and then yeah. you're you're looking through a, a toilet paper tube yep. and you're constantly scanning back and forth. I mean, dual tubes is the way in yeah, terms no, of. I, I don't know what, what he was saying. He's like, I'm like, you, you got, give it a minute. Think, think it over. He's like, no, I like singles. I'm like, hmm. okay, but. So, so there's an argument to be made about uh, like a PBS 14, right? Cause right. Then, Cause then you, you get your natural eye vision in whichever eye you're not using. Uh, and your brain can kind of tie that stuff together. So you feel like you have more peripheral, whereas with, Dual tubes, you're kind of locked yep. into yeah. to your 40 degrees or whatever it is. Um, so I can see where that argument is. But that that's easily remedied, again, by getting out, putting them on your head and, also and working. Also, argument, it. duels just look cooler. <laughs> well, that's an airsoft argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just look cooler. I'm sorry to say it. So now the the, the new trend, too, now, like Alex, he has um, a white phosphor 14 and then the thermal. Oh, the Cody? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 no. It's not the Cody. Uh, Oh, it's the flare. Okay. I tried putting that on one night. Does that mess with it, your brain? I almost had a seizure. Like, <laughs> like my brain just like could not compute, yeah. man. I mean, well, it works well for him, but he's oh my, it's Terminator it vision. Weird because his, a lot of people that run that setup, they set it so the color contrast is almost as close as you can get. Yeah. He also has it turned on though that the hottest 10% is red. Yeah. But now one eye is also getting red in it. Ooh. I put it on and was like, Dude, nope. I don't know how you do this. Oh, no. like uh, I, I had a physical reaction to it, and I was like, I, I'm epileptic now. Like I, I just developed it right now. <laughs> like from that, the, the, Jeez. it would drive me nuts. Dude. I still prefer the duels, rifle mounted thermal. That's yeah. It. How do you feel about thermals and airsoft? I might have a hot take on this. Thermals <sighs> for airsoft. Oh, for airsoft. For airsoft. I mean, it was kind of like it's wall just, hacks. It is wall hacks. I mean, you can literally just be like, yeah, there's people right there. Yeah. And you look through in your night vision, you're like, there's no people there. Well, so like, <laughs> that's my point, right? So I went to a, um, a Grimner event, right? At Panthera. Uh, it was a great event. Yeah. But we were like, uh, we had a vehicle and we went up. If you're familiar with Panthera, there's a dirt track and also a hardball track. And they're at a higher elevation than the compound. And we were like on watch, right? So we were up there and I had a, a thermal scope. I can't remember what it was, but. Um, you have the FLIR PTRS 226. Yeah. Right. So you're sitting there with your MVGs looking around, don't see anything. And then you pull your, your thermal up and you're like, okay, there's 12 guys getting out of their sleeping bags right now. <laughs> uh, yep. They're picking up their guns. They're coming down the road. Like it took all the mystery out of yeah. the, uh, like the enemy contact. And here's my hot take. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> Zulu gets canceled. Uh, here's my hot take. I think 
Thermals are amazing uh, for real war where the distance is can be miles. You know what I mean? I, they're absolutely practical and the future of any sort of night vision device is going to be thermal. Mm -hmm. right? We're going to yeah, be wearing yeah. dual thermals at some point. Oh, yeah. Um, but for Airsoft, a game where engagement, I'm sorry, max distance tops is like 100 yards. And that's with a crazy gun, right? Mm -hmm. With any sort of accuracy. I think thermals is... Almost too much. It's too much. Yeah. And it, and it takes away from the game. It doesn't add to the game. It adds for the individual player who has that yeah. ability, but it's getting more and more common. And and if we get to a point where, where and, and thermals are getting cheaper and cheaper, if we get to a point where everybody can just buy a handheld thermal, then like we might as well all be walking around in moon suits because <laughs> it's yeah. literally not going to matter anymore. Right, right, yeah. And there's not a good counter. I mean... I. You know, Unless the you're leaf wearing suits. those those heat blankets. Well, yeah, yeah like that's gonna be the new <laughs> yeah, one. So the, the leaf tops do an okay job, but your face, your hands, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and eventually that leaf will warm up with your body temperature. And I think for airsoft, specifically airsoft, man, I think I, I don't think it adds to the game, and I think it it, it detracts and it you you lose some of the mystery. It's yeah. overpowering. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I mean I was on watch. Yeah. How many times? And I was just this random dude. I don't even know who it was. Uh, just here. Here's my thermal. I'm like, that was all Dave. I was like, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. I was like, wait, you're giving me who's is this? Who's, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, but I you need it. to use it for your hour watch. And I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> for, for that ball car game, little Dave still had his uh, his skeet IR thermal, the Triticon one or Eotech one, whatever it is. And he was like, oh, yeah, we could just throw it around in rotation. Whoever yeah. Wants. And I'm like, I, I was like watching, watching like mice. We didn't. We, we weren't in contact at all. Yeah. So I mean, like, no one was coming up that mountain. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> I've, I, I've said this to these guys, you know, off air and everything. But uh, when I was in the military, I deployed, we had uh, this device called the Pass Thirteen, right? It was thermal, thermal optic. We had one. It was either per platoon or for company, right? This was like, like the platoon commander held it, and then when we were on post, he's like, here, you know, it was like <laughs> an eighty thousand dollar unit, something like that. But it was like. It was like this big. Yeah, it comes right? with a tripod, doesn't it? Uh, no, no tripod, oh. but you could actually like it had like seven different reticles or some shit, like mm. like five, five, six, seven, six, two, uh, fifty cal, two forty. Like you could, so you could BZO it oh. to different weapons okay. and then just take it off and, and then just put it on cycle that. through it, oh, that's whatever. Cool. But I, I remember being on post one night uh, on this overpass in Iraq, and I was looking down this road. We call it IED Alley, right? So we were always looking for people out there. And I see a hot spot way out. So I'm like, it's digital zoom. So I'm zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. I mean, we're talking, man, maybe a kilometer that oh, I'm zooming wow. in down okay. this road. And I was like, oh, it's a mouse. And I can see its tail. <laughs> oh, it just pissed in the road. Like, like, yeah. And that was back then. Mm -hmm. But the the thermals now, like, like Jordan's thermal he puts on his gun is this big. And it's just as good. Maybe it doesn't zoom in as much, but the clarity and quality yeah. in this little unit mm -hmm. is so good. It's yeah. it's free. Yeah, and amazing. like I, like the the uh, influx of I, I ray stuff. Well, that's what I have. Oh, okay. I yeah, have yeah. The I ray RH twenty five. Yeah. So that stuff's crazy. Oh, it's nuts. I can see the BBs because it's a fifty hertz refresh rate. And when we're playing in Zulu, this is why it's extremely overpowered there, and I love it. <laughs> we use plywood for all the buildings. The crack between mm -hmm. the top sheet and the lower yeah. sheet, I can see you walking through the building. Yeah, yeah. that's so oh, wonderful. It's, yeah, that's it's, like it's that's like splinters. That's like splinter cell stuff right there. It was yeah. really bad. So like last summer when I first got it, I'm I'm not trying to be the most overpowered broken player with it, but I was in the wood line looking down to uh, New CQB, push up to the outlier building by New CQB, and I'm watching the heat signature walk through the line on one of the buildings, and I'm like. Oh, he's gonna be at that window in like three, two, fire. He walks into the window, gets hit by a BB. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but that yeah, so that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that guy. Even yeah. if he had night vision, right? He's just like doop do doop do doop. Yeah. Doesn't hear, doesn't see anything. Yeah. Probably doesn't even hear his gun because yeah, he's got a Kythera. It's a, like, a suppressed yeah. Kythera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like 150 feet away shooting four O's. So it's like yeah. literally, I'm looking at how fast he's walking, going all right, three, two, fire. <laughs> One second later, walks into the window, whack right in the chest, and he's just like. It? And then he's just like, yeah, that was fun. You know yeah, I mean? it sucked. <coughs> so, I mean, like I said, my, my hot take is that specifically for Airsoft, yeah, they are I think it detracts. I don't think it adds yeah. to the game. And, and I'm sure the comments are going to explode on this. No, I mean, like, <clears throat> yeah, you, you, you're kind of bridging the, su the subject of like, yeah, it's great for the player, but it kind of ruins it for the other people. I yeah. think for games like Milsom West, it's very interesting to see the use of it. 
because it has created much like blank fire. Yeah. So with blank fire, you can bridge the BB wars gap. So like I can only engage you Supposed up to like to. 200 yeah. feet, yeah. but that blank fire can handle 200 feet to infinity. Now with thermal, when you're doing giant movements on AOs like the ball car AO last September, yep. having the ability to go, okay, so we're clear for like the next 500 yards. Yeah. And then we can have like freedom of movement, scan again. It gives you the opportunity. And plus like Saturday night when we're going to go on a little five man recce patrol and I scan the wood line and go, there's a fucking platoon out here waiting for us. Let's go. Yeah. So like it gives you the ability for larger games like Nilsson West to have another layering to it. Mm-hmm. But, but with like, a pickup game. It, but for like a pickup <clears throat> open yeah. play. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how it's overpowered. I almost think even even in the Milson West situation because and I and I only pick them out because they're pretty structured in, in terms of rank, uh, not rank, but like billets, you know, like I think maybe it's just like it's a platoon asset. Like there's one thermal yeah for the platoon instead of like a bunch of people just running through yeah them. because i mean i mean Maybe geez, for an even more structured version of milson west because like there's some other companies that are starting to do 40 hour games that are even more structured yeah maybe for a game like that but milson west has like created this kind of niche it's where an arms race right now it's an arms race just, but also it is a what you make of it game yeah, yeah so like the dudes can show up with no nods and just sleep during the night the dudes can show up with all their fancy night vision technology and play yeah all night sure yeah trying to switch that up now and throwing a wrench into it that might that might make well i think now's the time to do it right because the if you were going to do it i'm not saying they should i'm just this is my opinion right um thermals are starting to become more popular so right now you could nip it in the bud but if you give it another two years i mean i mean night vision back like when we were at drum like two oh, people. Oh, you were cool if you had a 14. Yeah. The two people had well, that, that vision. That's you know, why, you know, uh oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like oh. like GMR was so successful back then is because like they had they all had like PVS fifteens. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, some of their earlier videos and stuff, you look at everybody that they're engaging with, nobody's nobody got it. We know? all had boonie hats <laughs> or like IBH helmets. <laughs> I was I was wearing jungle boots, like really? Vietnam jungle boots. Like what? What? No wonder my feet are messed up. <laughs> I've got there was a, a a picture that Mario doesn't like to talk about. He's a little, he's a little embarrassed about it, but it's from uh, either Pine, I think it was Pine Plains, right? Mm-hmm. And it's him. Uh, he always had the most immaculate face paint ever, right? Oh, yeah. It like didn't do the job that face paint's supposed to do, but it, just but it was good? like perfect lines. It's, it looked good. It looked really. Good, right? He had like immaculate photo face paint. perfect. Yeah, dude. He it almost looked fake, right? But he has a there's a picture of him. Not you might have taken it actually. I don't know. But um, he's like shooting around a corner, but he's, how is he holding the gun? The gun's not in his shoulder. He's like, <laughs> oh, one yeah. of these, man. Yeah. And he hates to talk about it. And I That's was funny. like, oh, who's this guy? You know? Um, man, Pine Plains. Yeah. He went to, that was like, that's where he started, Pine Plains. That was like uh, 21 hours. And we were all like, oh, man, this is crazy. But that was like, that was, that was like a lion claws off, like 20, 21 hours. That is that be- Black Sheep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was I mean Lion Claws, I feel like is like kind of like this the entry level. Like entry level and ex- like kind of like speedball ish. Like you're really dumping BBs. Yeah. But this was just like endlessly dumping BBs. For Milson West, you're like dumping BBs maybe like an hour out of like 40. Yeah. So I like the the I, I do miss Fort Drum because that was fun. But I also like if we ever got back to if anyone got back to Zussman at Fort Knox, we that place was amazing. Well, that that was like for a long time. That was like the most advanced training or mount facility, like I think it still is in the planet, dude. I mean, yeah. they had like they had the, explosions oh, and everything, man. and they had this like tower where they were just like, let's like, make it explode here. Yeah, <laughs> I watched a whole documentary. About yeah, it. That, that whole water. T- it looks like a water tower, right. but it's really the. Control it's really just tower. a pyro tower. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. It RPG lines. I miss I miss like old airsoft stuff because like there was there's some really cool places that we used to go. Yeah, I see. I missed I. I didn't get into airsoft till right after that stuff stopped. And so like the big events for me uh, was like Red Storm 2. You know, that, that's really when I started like going to like national level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I missed I missed all like the the mount facilities and everything. I mean, realistically, the, old, the first time I played in a legitimate mount facility was Mississippi. And that was... Oh, that was, 20, was that? 2018. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, That's you know? far place. Did you guys fly there? Or you drove? Yeah, uh, we, we flew. We flew yeah, that oh, yeah. we I've flew. driven to Camp Shelby twice. Don't do it. Just fly. Yeah. 
We went to New Orleans. I made a trip out of it. We we like went to New Orleans. And, mm, that's and cool. Yeah, the game, was, the game was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. We got there Tuesday. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it was fun. Tuesday. It was a good trip. We call it Op Million Doll Hairs because it was expensive. Yeah, it was. But we knew it was gonna be. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. was like yeah, I mean, New Orleans, going all over Mississippi. It, it was fun. Fun weekend. You like get a, you can get into airsoft cheap, but you're just dumping money into it. Well, <laughs> I, I feel like that's with anything. You know, yeah. I always say though, like there's a professional level to everything, right? Like uh, gel blasters, gel blaster gun painting, you know, gel blaster uh, oh, water, what do they call hydro really dipping? Cool hydro dip like, there. like there's <laughs> yeah, right. Like there's a professional level to everything. So I mean, uh, you could be a chess player and then buy a, a chess board <clears throat> that's like two thousand. You buy the Kilo Tactical uh, chess board that's multicam. Oh yeah, there you go. I see, that's that. like twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> Good for, for them. No reason. Good for them if they're selling those. It's the yeah. hype. It's the hype. It's all the hype. It's all about. The I hype. have way too much kilo. As you're wearing <laughs> kilo shorts. I'm wearing kilo shorts. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm 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 all team LBT. I have LBT so much. I'm my fanny pack is over there. I don't want to grab it, but oh, it. Oh, the tiger stripe. Ones? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was eyeing the tiger stuff. stripe. I was like, oh, there's the tiger stripe over there. That's coming back. That's making a that's making a, a popular. I'm happy about now. that. Yeah. Cool. So that one. <clears throat> Oh God! Now I gotta go grab it. Yeah, just go grab Do it. Do you have to? Show it's just out. a fanny pack, man. Yeah, but it's part of the LBT Gold Label stuff. It's like a limited run. You have to be a member of their special snowflake program. Oh. Oh, look! Oh, how look pretty. at that! Look how pretty. Just to verify, there's the gold label. Yeah, look at that! Bang, bang bong. Yeah, Dom's a member there of that too. That's how he got those so, LBT. That's cool. Uh, that's cool. Rifle right. slings. Yeah. So this is the mass gray tiger. So they actually had their own version of tiger stripe with their own color they call mass gray um anyone that's an lbt extraordinaire like me knows what it is it's a special gray dev grew used it a couple it's times it's a big flex it's it really is and and it doesn't go with wolf gray or any other day. no no, even look no it's it's <laughs> you talking about this color here yeah yeah and uh they did it and now they're making day packs and everything out of it it's it's weird LBT. Yeah, it, they used to and then it died mm -hmm. and now they're bringing it back because like 2014 2015 there was a big lbt mass gray hype like the point yeah. bags lbt 1694s yeah, the uw rig oh, 1694s that, yeah that's yeah that. man i got two of them they had the uw rigs and them all in mass gray the rifle slings hell lbx still makes out gotta mass hand it to gray. uh gmr for making those like the, the that was it. one kit that was the thing oh the 1694s yeah, yeah. yeah. that and the, the, the saggy, I, if there saggy was map a, syndrome man they cured it so yeah if there was a kit that i would ever uh, if I was forced to make a GMR kit, it would be the tw it would be the 2012. Yeah, oh, the 1694s. Yep, yep. The Eagle Map Pack, the 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 banger Kydex on the right, two, the two Don't rows you have going. That? Down. I I did still have. I sold I sold the other uh, one of them with like the little diamond. They would like uh. Like yeah, they, 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 they he would take it. It wasn't stamped. It like was he literally just iron. cut it with a, with uh, an iron, yeah. and he would uh put burn it into the plastic. Yeah, because I still have it on my uh. My triple mag insert. Still the best triple mag insert I've ever used. I have three. I yeah. swear by it. There's, there's a whole story there. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't have any like regular camo anymore. It's all meme. It's all meme camo. It's all meme camo. Yeah. You, you know what? I can respect that. I don't, even, I don't know. I don't know. You wear it literally whatever you want. <clears throat> I'll probably just wear a chest rig because I play carriers. I yeah. agree with not that. I play carriers. I'm just so, too used to them. So it was a, uh, it was fun. My, makes my back hurt so much. No, I hear you. The other night when uh, <laughs> old dads. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> because for clarification, one of our friends is supposed to be selling you a Benghazi ticket because he has an extra. He calls me right after he texts me. And he's like, "Yeah, I'll sell it to Ted." And he's like, "I just want you to know." I will only sell it to Ted if he agrees not to wear anything splatter camo at the event. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. I do have. I still, I still have multicam black. <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta, my, we gotta my give you a whole was, set. Hey, you have to take that up with Ted. I'm just trying to facilitate the fact that you're gonna go to Benghazi. <laughs> you don't have to wear a splatter camo. How about we get you you a whole set of Miami Tiger? Just as Yo, I want Miami Tiger. I was looking at it, but I've already invested way too much money in splatter. I can't go another, <laughs> dude. I have, I have. Just mix it. Mix I have two, man. I also have a whole set of um, that 1980s solo cup. Jazz. That jazz, jazz solo cup. I have a plate yeah. carrier. I have a helmet nice. cover. Nice. It's stupid. Like, nice. I, I have stupid, <laughs> stupid camo, man. I'm the I'm the complete opposite. I like, uh, <laughs> like you have all the meme camos. Like I have an addiction to like cool looking foreign camos, man. Right yep. now, I've been yep. uh, eyeing up. Who who just joined uh, NATO? Uh, Norway, 
Sweden? Not Sweden. Norway. Norway? Finland? Finland. What's What's Finland. Finland. Finland has some dope camo, man. They're it's almost like a German flag tarn, but it's slightly different. Um, they're green variants, like whatever, but they're they're uh, desert. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna get a set. Oh, yeah. They're That's cool, cool, man. I I like this stuff. I, I have to. I I have a bunch of coworkers from Finland, um, and uh, I should because it's a uh, required uh, required military service there. Good for them. Oh yeah. So I should uh, make sure it's not. I should like, see. Uh, uh, they can send see to me, I see. I don't need the the gold label or anything. Like I love FFI. Shout out to FFI. If you want to sponsor us, let me know. <laughs> I love FFI. I think their their replica quality is really good, mm-hmm. um, and their their colors are correct, which is very important. Yep. Um, and they fade. So I don't. Really. They fade great. Actually, yeah. their M eighty one fades phenomenally. It looks great. The funny part is like the newer Cry M eighty ones. They're like we fixed the fading problem, and everyone's over here going, "No, we wanted it to fade still. Like yeah, stop man. doing that. We want the salt, baby. Yeah, we want it to look like that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> um, uh, where was I going with that? That the replicas are just as good. I get it. Um, but you like foreign camo. That's right. So I'm, so I'm like, uh, oh, but I don't need like. It doesn't need to be cry for me. Actually, the the two sets of cry, three sets of cry that I own, I'm actually not really that happy with them. But um, and I like the FFI better. They fit yeah. better. They they feel better. Like I haven't worn my cry pants since 2018. I have two Caspi and Gap. I think pairs of cries and then I actually uh, I resend that a little bit though. I bought a pair of uh, G4s. The hot weather one. The hot weather G4s. They're like pajama pants. Oh, really? They're I love pajama. I I wear my like old navy <laughs> pants. That's what that's all I wear for airsoft. They're man. they're so thin. Yeah. Pros and cons. Literally, the first time I wore them, a stick hit me in the shin and it ripped it. <laughs> like, like that's just, just gonna happen, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think r- right now they're sitting in my in my shed because that's where everyone goes. Yeah. And uh, they have a rip in the crotch, and I'm afraid to wear them because I know that rip's just gonna get bigger. But they are awesome. Yeah. They're awesomely light. They're super expensive, but. Um, I'm really digging Beyond uh, pants right now. So I had I had two sets of Beyond, and both of them ripped in the same spot, and I was like, man, oh. yeah. So I I run Pattas if I can find them, uh, specially used. Um, and I have I have one full set of AOR two Pata L nines. Um, I have a bottom that's a normal L nine cut, and then the top is the weird one where it has the full camo uh, yeah. T shirt. Uh, both I was able to get used as a set for 200 off of eBay, which I found was really good. Um, and I have an AOR one set of pad L nines and bottoms. And, uh, honestly, for the price that you can get them used, I say that you can, you can get pad stuff for a whole lot cheaper than cry. And somehow it ends up being a lot rarer because you just can't get pad stuff new. You just can't. I yeah, did they did, didn't they they take like a like a moral stance on the They don't exist. If you bring it to a Patagonia store, you mention it to them, they literally do not exist. They deny the existence <laughs> even though the tags are printed right there <laughs> yeah. on the pants, they will deny their existence till the end of days. Well, that Interesting. yeah, that happened with Patagonia and also Arcteryx. Arcteryx, yeah. yep. Yep. Cuz they, Wait, they don't they don't sell their uh... So, they limited it to civilians. If you want Arcteryx stuff, they still make it. But you need to have an active military. Email. Well, so that was yeah. The, the new leaf line changes because up until like recently, you used to be able to buy the Arcteryx leaf line as a civilian. Yeah, yeah. Now you need to be able to prove that you're like active duty or police to buy it, which sucks because like my leaf Adam jacket is way more comfortable than the normal Adam. Mm-hmm. However, there was like a big fiasco like a year or two ago, and Tyler would be able to tell us better. Yeah. Um. Somebody emailed Arcteryx asking about something from the leaf line as a civilian or they were looking for like an AOR one something and the whoever was in the Arcteryx sales rep department at that point emailed them back going we don't support this we don't actually make that bubble I do remember this yeah. yep 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 and yep. like they lost a bunch of dead through contracts because they're like we don't support making military equipment blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> it's like oh okay cool we'll just go to a different company yeah. and dropped them got it Oof. so but Patagonia is probably the like they were the biggest and most wide contract yeah, there's a bunch of Patagonia yeah. tactical stuff. Out so there. the PCU units, like yeah, the have. the level five, they have a it, level five and a level seven. Yep, and um, they have those. There's level, they go everywhere for everywhere from level four all the way up to seven. I know that. Oh yeah, I forgot about the fours. Yep, one, yep. One of and, our friends has a level four AOR two Patagonia jacket. And literally, all I got 
uh, you can get Pata stuff and it's usually cheaper than Cry because not yeah. many people look for Pata stuff. Like I've seen Gen 1 Pata combat tops and medium or large go for like 80 bucks off of eBay. You just got to look in the right places. Mm. Well, that's like the, uh, oh shit. You have the Orc level five. Yeah. With you. Oh, Those yeah. ones go for like $350. I bought my brand new in the package and it was like I had a pair, the but, whole, the whole set way back in the day and had no idea what it was yeah, and i was yeah. like i don't need no one ever anymore. does yeah. thing, and i sold it wants, <laughs> everyone wants the orc one for like the black accents and the fact that like that was the ranger one now it's, it's the, the yeah the zipper is really cool like yeah, there's the like a waterproof cool. black thing that goes over the zipper and but it's like the, shiny it looks cool the patagonia level five pcu you can get on ebay for like 80 bucks and it's the same thing you, you same used thing. to be yeah. now you can't really i can't find them i haven't been able to find them for the last five months say, under 300 dollars. i bought my old patagonia level 5 pcu jacket for like 65 dollars on ebay yep. because it had like a blue pen exploded in the pocket paint stain paint stain only on the inside of the jacket so when Seriously. i got when i was getting my pcu uh i ordered i had to go jump through some hoop uh hoop hole uh, loopholes and I eventually came in contact with one of these guys that was part of Schadengruppe, uh, which is a German LARPing group here in the Northeast. And they got me in touch with some guy that was located down south. I'm like, hey, bud, I need to, I, I'm trying to find a PCU. I, I was told that you're going to be the guy that's going to help me out. And he's uh, like, yeah, man, I got one. It's just got a little bit of a rip. And uh, I, I, I just shipped it out to Tactical Taylor. And uh, um, I can have it out to you in two weeks. I'm like, great here's the money 150 transaction made i didn't hear from him for an entire month <laughs> and i i put in a claim with venmo i'm like dude like my track i don't have the tracking number that he gave me hasn't been shipped out there there it literally i have no idea where it's located and eventually i was just getting so tired with it eventually one day i walk outside there's a box on the ground I'm like no way this the PCU had just shown up after a whole month of me waiting after the transaction and me buying it, and uh, for the one hundred and fifty that I spent, I wasn't really all that disappointed. I turn it and I open it up. Turned out it had been done by Tack Taylor. It was the wrist right here had just been split open, and there was like a weird stitching pattern that uh, closed up what what looked to be a big rip. But I was like. It was good. If you're going to get like cold weather gear or stuff that's like wet weather, try to get real if you can. Like I get it. The the like the FF5 stuff, I have an FFI combat top. I love it. It's comfy. But if you're going to get stuff that is going to be for when you're out there, when it's like what just when it starts raining and it just gets a little bit cold, you might want the real stuff. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> another hot take here. <laughs> got air weather air softeners. <laughs> Honestly, I think uh, PCUs suck. They do. Okay. They don't stop the rain. They're too hot. You know, they, they like trap in your own sweat, so you're wet because of your own sweat. They look cool. It's a cool color gray. And they look. using a Columbia jacket that yeah. I got at uh, LV, right? I think or something. Like, Actually, I like my outdoor ones. Too. Yeah, like all these outdoor companies, especially now, there's so many to choose from now. I mean, there, there's, and if, uh, yeah, I agree, you should go with the real outdoor research jacket. And all right. So there's so much better stuff on the civilian market, like, you get, we, we all have to keep in mind, right? Everything for the military, that like, yeah, maybe there's a picture with the Navy SEAL in it, so that makes it cool for the LARPy type of thing. But it's, it's all made by the lowest bidder. bidder. It's literally the lowest bidder. Um, but, I mean, they're cool. I did. Yeah. But, got my Ozark Trail uh, sleeping bag from Walmart. For real. Tell <laughs> <laughs> the Ozark Trail stuff it actually is. Uh, my uh, self-inflating uh, sleeping pad is... I've used that all my Muslim West. Dude, best... In, <laughs> best I have in, a Cedar <laughs> Summit sleeping pad. Best investment I ever made and I didn't make it till like very recently was like a Walmart blow up pillow. Yes. I had been sleeping. Yes. I had been sleeping on like my plate carrier as a pillow. Mm -hmm. like, I use my helmet. Right. <laughs> Dude, the first time I slept with that blow up pillow, I was like, why have I been living in the dark? Ages? <laughs> like, like, like it was like four bucks or something. It's basically a fancy balloon. <laughs> and, uh, like, it's just a durable and it, balloon. And it, and it, you know, when you when you deflate it and put it in the pound, it's like this big, weighs nothing. I just carry it around in my rucksack, and it's like my most prized possession when I'm out. That's there. awesome. It just makes you good. But, but guys, we've been going for uh, almost about two hours now. Uh, it's uh, actually longer than that. Jesus. Uh, so I think it's about time to start wrapping it up. If you got any final comments, 
This has been a lot of fun, guys. It is it fun. This is yeah. great. Yeah, man. Definitely worth the two hour drive. Yeah, right. I appreciate that. Well, uh, how can people uh, find you? Uh, look uh, on Instagram, Ted Colgrove dot pews dot pews or Ted get or you can do if you want to see my family, it's Ted Colgrove dot photos. Had to se- had to separate the business from the family. Sure. Absolutely. Give a website. Uh, Ted Colgrove dot com. Man, just the name branding is awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. So if you want to find Ted, if you want to, if you're getting married, need a photographer, if you're an airsoft dude and you want to hire him just to follow you around follow for a day. Follow your team around. <laughs> <laughs> he flies drones. He's got an amazing uh, resume. Look up tedcolgrove.com. Dot net? Dot com. Dot com. All right. With that, good night. God bless. We're out.